which I was going to do it live. I didn't get a chance to get as much stuff written down as I thought I would have. <clears throat> I tried to write down some things, but I, I I was tired last night, so I just passed right out. So I wasn't able to write down as much things as I wanted to. I was only, look, I was only able to write down this much. And I passed out. So I'll just be coming from the heart on the stream. The lost books are all false, not biblical. When you talk about the lost books, we're talking about the book of Enoch, the book of Jasher, and any other books that people could mention. I'm going to be specifically talking about the book of Jasher. Some people say that the book of Enoch is good for certain uh, certain aspects and certain reasons but I'm going to deal with the book of Jasher and like I said before <clears throat> in the past i say again the book of Enoch is mentioned in the word of God in the scriptures but it doesn't tell you to go outside the word and look and study for something because that's the case why would it say stay away from certain type of arguments and contentions about the law stay away from questions about genealogy and stuff like that it just tells you to stay away from certain stuff so th there are several books of Jasher did y'all know that it's a whole bunch of people that wrote books of Jasher they're, they're not just the same person So there are multiple books of Jasher. One of them was written by the Mormons. One of them was written by the Mormons. A lot of them book of Jashers are 16th century writings. Did y'all know that? So these books are not, they weren't even written at the same time as the scriptures, as the word of God. Book of Jasher, 16th century, that's 1500s. 500 years ago, we got the word of God 2,000 years old. So that's that's the thing about the book of Jasher. You got the Mormons writing their own version of the book of Jasher. You got many other authors that wrote the book of Jasher. So have you seen all of them? Did you look and make sure all of them are the same? It's just like when it comes to the word of God, when they start making them NIV Bibles, that's that's adding to the word. It don't say the same thing. Even the new King James, they start saying different things. So I guess I just sit here and we just go through whatever comes from the heart. I don't know. If I'm, I guess I'm going to open the book. So it lets us know that Jesus Christ is the high priest. So it tells us that he was he was um was counted more worthy of more glory than Moses. Hebrews chapter 3 wherefore holy brethren partakers of the heavenly calling consider the apostle and high priest of our profession Christ Jesus who was faithful to him that appointed him as also Moses was faithful in all his house for this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses and as much as he who hath built the house hath more honor than the house for every house is built by some man but he that built all things is God and Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. See, they were, they they thought Moses was trying to be a judge. They said when he killed them people and he was telling them he was about to bring them the laws, they said, who made thou a judge? Who made you a judge? You're going to kill me, like smoke me like you did the Egyptian? But it wasn't Moses. 
it was God. But he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house. Whose house are we? If we hold fast the confidence in the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provoca provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. It's a sin to take God's word and say, well, these are all the years, the lost books. I got all the years from Jesus' life that's not in the Bible. It say don't take and don't add to the word. That's a, that's a deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in a provocation. So for some, when they had heard, did provoke. How be it, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell into the wilderness, and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see this so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So with Moses, they it was the same thing. A lot of them Could, what they didn't believe and they couldn't enter in enter into God's rest so they what the word did what word did they say they couldn't enter in because they didn't believe So they couldn't make it in because they didn't believe. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. This is this, like the same thing what happened with Moses. A little different though. Remember when I told you they said who who made thou a judge? They didn't they didn't want to listen to Moses, so he had to run away. It was the same thing similar to what Noah, when he was telling them the flood is coming. Nobody believed him. They didn't want to listen to him. They was partying, um, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the flood came. Same thing, similar with Moses. They didn't want to listen to him. You, you can't even speak right. You got a speech impediment. They had to, they, Aaron was with Moses certain times to help, like, not 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 to help him but he was he was he was assistance watch this though hebrews chapter 4 let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it for Unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. 
It says, anybody want to, Nelson Wilson, you want to give me that? The Sabbath was made for man and not the man, not, not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the son of man is Lord of the Sabbath. You want to give me that? Give me that chapter and verse. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into that because they say we got to keep the Sabbath, but they don't tell us what day it is in the Bible. It say the seventh day. God rest and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. This is why I say God. Um, the Sabbath is for the Sabbath is for, made for something. It says it a certain way and I don't want to mis misread it or misinterpret it. So I wait and somebody put it in. I'll read it. Seeing therefore, it remaineth that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. So remember, they was telling them, you got to be circumcised and keep the laws of Moses. They said, who we gave no such commandment. So they didn't believe. They was running up to the uh, Gentiles, telling them they got to be circumcised. The Pharisees, the Hebrew Israelites. That was still trying to keep the laws of Moses. Again, he limited a certain day, saying, In David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased. From his own works as god did from his let us labor therefore to enter into that rest lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief for the word of god is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and so the word of god is powerful it's quick it's sharp what does it do? It pierce the soul. It, it, no, it pierce and divide asunder. Remember, it said, what, what, what God joined together, let not man put asunder. So now it's telling you the word of God uh, pierce your soul. No, it says it's quick, it's powerful, and it's sharpening any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow so your soul and your spirit and all your bones in your body every bone in your body and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart so whatever you think in your head and whatever is inside of your heart the word of god are divided so you know what divide is make it easier to, to, to understand two, how many times is two going to eight, four times. So break it down. So you can't be a decept. You, this, this is where spirit of discernment comes in and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So you have to know the word of God to be able to even swing this sword and hit um, Satan's kingdom and tear down Satan's kingdom, win souls over for the kingdom of God to cast out devils it tells you it's going to discern your thoughts and the intents of your heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our profession. But we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may attain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men and things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts 
and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity and by reason hereof he ought as for the people so also for himself to offer for sins. This is where y'all always hear me say the priest didn't just have to give offering sin offerings for the people. They had to do sin offerings for themselves too. And by reason hereof, he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer sins. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron, so also Christ glorified not himself to be made in high priest. Christ didn't go around dressing up in the big robes and all that stuff. He talked about the fears. He said, they love to pop the borders of their phylacteries and enlarge their garments. And he said, they love popping their collars and they like them long jackets. You see them up in the market, they want you to call them rabbi. He said, they want the chief seats in the marketplace. He said, when you go sit down somewhere, sit in the lowest spot. Therefore, he said, if you go in there and you sit in the highest spot, someone come tell you, you got to move because that's their spot, you're going to be embarrassed. He said, if you go, you sit in the lowest spot, then when they come tell you to move up to a higher spot, you'll be have honor. So, and no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called God, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made in high priest. He was humble, took on the form of a servant. He used to dress in the same clothes as the people that was on the side of the temple begging for alms. They said, this man ain't no... um." prophet he ain't no king that's why he kept coming up asking him are thou the king of the jews they ain't have to ask no other king in the scriptures that but christ that's how humble he was so remember they, a lot of them kings were already put in they were called kings they were made king solomon all of them but jesus he he was completely different he could have been like Solomon and had all them wives and stuff like that. But he knew he had to do the will of God. He knew that Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. So he picked up where all them prophets left off in the Old Testament and fulfilled it. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made in high priest. But he said that. But he's he that said unto him, thou art my son. Today have I begotten thee as he saith also in another place. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard and that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. God called of God excuse me, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe, but strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection. Y'all talking about y'all can't be perfect? Why does it say be you perfect as your father is perfect? Why does it say if you want to be perfect, sell all that you have and give to the poor and come follow me? Y'all talking about ain't nobody perfect. We all make mistakes. That ain't what the word of God say, brothers and sisters. It say in Hebrews chapter six. First verse, it says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God of the doctrine of baptisms 
and of laying on of hands and of the resu and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment see this is what we supposed to be doing baptisms laying on hands resurrecting people from the dead and eternal judgment most of these preachers y'all only here to do they try to do eternal judgment they ain't even doing that right how you going to judge somebody with a you got a beam in your eye talking about hey brother let me take the moat out of your eye don't y'all only go to church on sunday take tithes and offerings in your church name not biblical how you going to do eternal judgment how the Hebrew Israelites going to baptize somebody if they don't want to let the law go and walk in the New Testament? Because that's the days we living in, New Testament. But that don't mean all the law prophecy has been fulfilled. I'm not saying throw away the law. I'm saying move on to where we at. We under the New Testament. The, the old house was old. We don't live in that no more. It's a new house. When you build a new house, do you go back to live in the old one? What's the point of building a new one? Of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Do anybody need prayer in here today? Do anybody that's an unbeliever want to accept Jesus Christ in their life? Do anybody just need prayer? Type it in the comment section. Let me know. I only see one person in the chat, but we're going to keep going. In this will we do, if God permit, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh off upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, meat for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shewed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints, and do minister. If we desire that every one of you, see, it's a minister to the saints and do minister. It ain't say they had their own ministry, and they named their ministry AAG, All About God Ministries. I don't see that in the scriptures. I'm just saying. And we desire, y'all don't want to test me on that. And we desire to every one of you do shoot the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promises to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, surely, blessing, I will bless thee and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise for men verily swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein God willing more abundantly to shew unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon a hope set before us. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. As an anchor of the soul, not archon. Anchor. Archon are devils. That's what the uh, boule call themselves. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil whether the forerunner is for us entered even jesus made in high priest forever after the order of melchizedek it tells us that dumb priests back then were made without an oath 
but the Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So it says, by so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament, an unchangeable priesthood. So after you read Hebrews, let's go into Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10. No, let's go to Hebrews chapter 8, verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. It's talking about the Old Testament. If the Old Testament was faultless and the law was perfect and everybody had no problem with keeping the law, there would be no place sought for the second. So for finding fault with them, he saith, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying know the Lord for all shall know me from the least to the greatest for I will be merciful unto for I will be merciful to their unrighteous and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more and that he saith a new covenant he hath made the first old now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. So it's old. We ain't going to live in a house that's old and, 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 and decayeth and waxing old, ready to vanish away. We got a new house, the New Testament. Amen, Brother Cornelius Cun Cunnins. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shoe bread, which is called the sanctuary. Remember when Jesus was on the um, mountain and he was praying. And was it? I forgot one of his disciples was with him and they started seeing light like. They seen a whole bunch of light. And then they said, Moses stood right there next to him. And then Elijah and one of the prophets, I mean, one of the apostles turned around and said, this is good, master. Let's make three tabernacles here. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. So when you read that, you think, take this into consideration what it say in Hebrews 9, verse 2. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shoe bread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded in the tables of the covenant. And over it, the cherubims of glowing of glory, excuse me, of glory, shadowing the mercy seat of which we can now, which we cannot now speak particularly. Now, when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that we that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing which was a figure for the time then present and which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and cardinal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation but christ being come 
and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the, be the death of the testor. For a testament is of no force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the tester liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and high sop and sprinkled blood and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of of the true but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world but now once in the end of the world he hath appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was off, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices. All right, now read Hebrews chapter 10 if you want the rest of that. I'm going to see what else we got. It tells us that if we sin willfully, after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. So all y'all Hebrew Israelites, y'all want to have concubines. Do you know he that despised Moses' law died? Without mercy under two or three witnesses. The only reason why a lot of y'all saying that because y'all got mercy. But God ain't going to keep giving y'all mercy if y'all keep going against his word. Twisting his word. Y'all err not knowing scriptures. Of how much. Of how much sorer punishment suppose ye shall he be though worthy. Who hath trodden underfoot the son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant. Wherewith he was sanctified and holy thing. And hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So it's 
letting you know. It says marriage is honorable and all. So why would it say this? If y'all want to have concubines and all that, why would God say this in his word in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4? Marriage is honorable and all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Y'all think y'all can have concubines and y'all make these scriptures seem like they're not written in here. That's why I got to do a lot of studying when I come back with this video on the Hebrew Israelites. They made this into a whole new doctrine that they can have more than one wife and they can have concubines and all this stuff. Do the, do the, do the, do the law of marriage say that? When you get married, do it say I marry you husband and wife, death to you part. So why don't you just get married with, with, with all your wives at the same time? If that's the case, you ever seen a, a, a wedding like that? I haven't. I haven't heard of one. See? Because it's not biblical. If if God wanted y'all to have all these concubines, he, God wouldn't have put this in his word in Hebrews 13. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable and all. In the bed undefiled. Undefiled, brothers and sisters. No. Sleep from one bed to another bed. Stay at this wife house this week. Then next week, go to my other wife house. It don't say that in the word of God. It say, no, have concubines like Solomon. No, it say marriage is honorable in all, in the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. It didn't say, if you still under the laws of Moses and you follow the Old Testament and you claim to be a Hebrew Israelite, you can be an adult. You could commit adultery. Even in the Old Testament, in Exodus, it say, thou shalt not commit adultery. How y'all going to get around this? It say faith without works is dead. You can't just have faith. faith it say faith can't save you. He says in James chapter 2, verse 18, yeah, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Shew me thy faith without thy works, and I will shew thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So the devils believe is one God. But. They tremble because they know they're not living for that one God. They, they, the devils, you got, you get what I'm saying? The devils believe and tremble. Remember, Satan transformed himself as an angel of light. So, of course, remember when Jesus was getting tempted, the devil came and quoted to him scriptures. If thou be the son of man or the son of God, turn the stone into bread. He said it's written in he, he, and the second time he said something different. He said, it's written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, lest thy dash thy foot against the stone at any time. And it, and it rend thee or something. He knew scriptures. The devil's sneaky. Thirty-eight minutes, y'all. I, I think I lost my hours because I wanted to really come at 7 a.m. I wasn't able to come live at 7 a.m. So I think I lost the momentum that I was actually supposed to get because that when I hit that 17K. Oh, yeah, I, I edited the video back. I found out how to edit it back. So you got the whole video. If y'all want to go back and see what was said from the beginning of that video, I think the beginning of the video was the most important part of the video. That one that hit 17K. Cause I come in strictly directly talking about the, the the um breakfast club thing and I break it down and I read it through like three times and do three breakdowns and all of them is important. Gotta get another book soon. I'm running out of what should 
Should I go through under we are we under the law of Moses? Y'all want this? Nah, I think I got something different. We can go real quick. You got people that say third time's a charm. That's not in the word of God. You got people that say cleanliness is next to godliness. God said it's not a sin to, we to eat with unwashing hands. <laughs> so you got people that say certain things. These are sayings that they heard. God don't like ugly. It don't say that in his word. The word ugly ain't even in the Bible really like that. As 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 y'all think, God never called nothing ugly. He say wicked, evil, corrupt, darkness, iniquity, the devil. Or he is be more specific. Whoremongers, adulterers, backbiters, slanderers, murderers. False witness, liars, walking abominations unto the Lord. Let's go into Proverbs chapter 6, verse 22. These six things the Lord hate. Yes, yeah, seven are abomination to him. A proud look is what y'all have when y'all celebrate Christmas. Everybody wear Christmas colors and stuff. St. Patrick's Day, I don't know if that passed. That's a proud look. Where's Proverbs? Proverbs 16 and 22. No, Proverbs 6 and 22. No, Proverbs 6 and 16. Excuse me. Seven abominations the Lord hate. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yeah, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. Y'all don't think y'all looking proud when y'all go celebrate Christmas? Everybody got Christmas colors on. You got Halloween costumes on and stuff like that. That's not a proud look. If you want to get even deeper, we'll say women adorn themselves with modesty, not with shame, face array, or broaded hair and stuff like that. And the putting on of, it, it, it tells you. So a proud look can be, you keep trying to put this weave in your head every day. You got these long nails and makeup on and eyelashes and, and lipstick and all that. That's a proud look. You look like Rahab. You look like the harlot, the one that danced for the king, painted her face. You get what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? Made the king take an oath to, to, to put John the Baptist's head in the charger. A proud look. So these six things doth the Lord hate. Yeah, seven are abomination to him. A proud look. A lying tongue. So y'all tell people that we still under the law. We got to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of Moses. We got to eat. We can't eat food with um blood in it. You can't eat seafood and stuff like that. Did God say that in his word? Did God put it in his word? Then he said, don't call nothing uncommon. They said, rise, Peter, eat and kill. He said, not so, Lord. I haven't ate anything uncommon. Peter was a Hebrew. Hebrew of the Hebrews. Circumcised on the eighth day of the tribe of Benjamin. He was raised under a doctor of the law, raised under Gamaliel. So he said, rise, Peter, eat. He said, not so, Lord. I haven't eaten anything that's uncommon. He said, don't call what God. He told him two times, don't call what God made common or unclean. So yet you won't have a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood. And heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Who made all these pagan holidays? 
they heart was devising wicked imaginations. We already got holy days in the Bible. They're not saying holy day. They're saying holiday. That's something completely different. Fourth of July, they want to celebrate their independence. But are y'all truly independent? Because y'all don't have Christ. And heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and run into mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Then it talks about the ways of a harlot. You see these things that the Lord hate. He don't like liars and wickedness. Y'all still his children, but he hates the way how you live. He hates unrighteousness. I got some written down. I'm just going to read this about the chosen ones. And I got more scriptures on this, but... If y'all Hebrews claim to keep the law and commandments, why y'all don't keep number six or suffer not a witch to live? If we not under eye for eye, why trouble the body of Christ? Hebrews claim we got to learn ways of Israelites eating certain foods. They err thinking Gentiles are white people when the Bible don't even mention black or white people. We are not from Judea, Jerusalem or Israel. We are the nation who was grafted in. We are born in America, not Judea. Jerusalem how can anyone make the topic chosen ones when God said when God said it in his word first some people think that they created the topic chosen ones the black Hebrew Israelites are about just as real as black history month they are put in non-biblical identity that no one ever see anywhere from Torah to new to the New Testament gospel. This is why people call them radical because black is an adjective, not a noun. So why would y'all call yourself black Hebrews? So it's not a person, place or thing. How can a Hebrew Israelite be black? Where's black land? We know where Judea, Jerusalem is, but is black a nation. Y'all love trying to add man's lies on top of God word. And I hit him like that. And then I got uh, the scriptures written down. But it's a lot of scriptures. I won't go through all of these, but I'll go through some of them. And we, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2 and 9. That's I know what that's going to say, but you are a chosen generation. Now, generation is dealing with everybody that's living on the earth at that time. Not just a particular... Um, not just a particular nation of people as what y'all think with the Israelites when they say they were God's chosen people after the New Testament it changed remember it says there's neither Jew nor Greek bond nor free but all are one in Christ Jesus now we go in the first Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 it says but ye are a chosen generation that means it don't got nothing to do with your nation or your race or your nationality is all about are you living are you breathing then you chosen that's what that means but ye are chosen generation generation mean everybody living on the face of this earth right now we are all a part of this generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God, which have which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. See? Now, let's go to John. John 15 and 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he shall he may give it to you. These things I command you, 
that ye love one another. So you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. So are y'all still only the chosen ones? This is a New Testament now. This is John. They're not talking to the Hebrew Israelites. This ain't written. Like, y'all got to know how to read the scripture. I'm going to continue. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Watch this. Deuteronomy um, 14 and 12. No, excuse me, Deuter um, 14 and 2, Deuteronomy 14 and 2. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. So this was written specifically to the Hebrew Israelites. God chosen them to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. This one salvation was given to the Jews, but later on, as you read, given to the Gentiles, then you got the laws regarding tithing. So if your pastor ain't doing what you see in Deuteronomy chapter four, no, yeah, 14 verse 22, if you don't know all this stuff about tithing, you might be getting deceived about, deceived about them tithes and offerings. I just wanted to go into Deuteronomy to show y'all that. Now let's go. Back, we're going to Isaiah. Let's stay in the old. Isaiah 43.10. All right, here we go. Isaiah 43.10. Let's see what this say. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God form, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. So, it's Old Testament confirming again that y'all are, the Israelites are servants whom was chosen by God. It's all Old Testament, but when you go into the New, it's completely different. Watch. Let's go on Ephesians. Let's go on Ephesians. Go in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 through 5. According to as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. See? So it talks about he chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So this is before the foundation of the world. This was before Moses came. This was before Genesis. This was before Exodus. He chosen us. Remember, before you was forming your mother womb, I knew you. These messages that we read in the Old Testament were written just to Israelites. But as the New Testament came, we had to learn and study these things and salvation was given to all of us. This is why we can all use every word in the whole Old to New Testament, but not to, not to keep the law to follow, to learn from it. The law is our light. Let me go into Mark on y'all. Might have to make this a whole topic and go after I'm done with these scriptures, read the rest of them that I got. Mark chapter 13. Verse 20 through 26. And except that the Lord hath shortened those days, no flesh shall should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. 
And then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. For false Christ, where we at? Mark chapter 13, verse 20 through 26. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall shew signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the very elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. So we'll let you know right here that... whom he had chosen he shortened the days so God chose us I, I'm, let me see what it's saying Psalms I got something in Psalms 33 12 and after this I'm going to just go all New Testament on y'all. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. It didn't say bless Israel. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. No, only the Israelites, brothers and sisters. We in Old Testament now. See? Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. No, bless only the Israelites in Jerusalem. No, it says blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Now, that, that second part could mean that the ones from Israel that he chosen for his inheritance to give the laws of his laws. But after that, every nation, they didn't keep the laws. They couldn't keep them. First Corinthians, this is where we learn. And when we go into New Testament, we learn a lot about that. Watch this. First Corinthians. Chapter 1, verse 28 and 29. And base things of the world and things which are despised, hath God chosen. What? I thought he only chosen the Israelites. Oh, no, no, no. It says, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 28. And base things of the world and things which are despised, hath God chosen. I thought they was the only chosen one. Yeah. And things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should, gl should glory in his presence. That's 1 Corinthians 28 and 29. Let me see what it's in numbers because I keep getting these, all these Old Testament scriptures. I got them written down, but number 16, 5, and he spake unto Kariah. And unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will shew who are his and who is holy. Remember, a day with the with the Lord is a thousand years. So when he said tomorrow, he could have been talking about old New Testament. We going somewhere, brothers and sisters. Follow me. Numbers 16 and 5. Number 16 and 5. It says in God's word, a day with the Lord is a thousand years. Numbers 16 and 5. And he spake unto Kariah, or Korah, excuse me, Korah. He spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will shew who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he had chosen will he cause to come near unto him. All right. Even tomorrow, the Lord will shew who are his and who is holy. Let's go into Joshua. Hold on. Going to Joshua. 
you never hear anybody really talking about Joshua. Didn't it say Jesus mean um, Joshua in, 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 in Hebrew? What did it say? Hold on. Let's go back. Let's see. It says that Joshua, it says Jesus' proper name derives from the Hebrew Joshua, meaning Yahweh delivered, J-O-S-H-U-A. Same Joshua that we read in the Old Testament. So going to Joshua 24, 22. And Joshua said unto the people, ye are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses that ye have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. So God chose, look, what would make you chosen? Because God chose you or you chose him. Many Israelites were chosen, but they didn't follow the commandments and laws. So what did that make what made them chosen? Because God chose them or they chose to follow God. You got to take this and go deep into this whole chosen one topic. You could be a chosen one and be dying and, and promoting sin. Like Solomon. He was backsliding when he wrote the whole Ecclesiastes. Now I got Kings. First Kings. I want to say 11 and 32. But he shall have one tribe for my servant. David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake. The city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. So this is letting us know, and 1 Kings is confirming, God chose Jerusalem. Now, let's go to Isaiah, stay in Isaiah, I mean, stay in 1 Kings 11.36. It says, and unto his son will I give one tribe, that David my servant may have a light always before me, in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name there. So the city of Jerusalem are chosen. It tells you the people is chosen. Let's continue. First Kings 12 and 21. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin and hundred and four score thousand chosen men, which were warriors to fight against the house of Israel to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. So the tribe of Benjamin, you know, Paul was a Benjamite, Hebrew of the Hebrews, circumcised on the eighth day. And what did he say? Paul said, I counted it all dung to win Christ. All that stuff I learned in the law, all that, all them old statues, he said, all the, I counted it dung just to win Christ. Here we go. The comments coming through. I see y'all. Brother, we need to talk. Hey, Junior, tell your email me. My email's in the about me section. Email me. Hold up, brother. You said we are still under Mosaic law? No, I didn't say that. I said, in the law... You got the Hebrew Israelites that say that they're God's chosen people. But that was in the Old Testament that he was telling them salvation is of the Jews. As we get into the New Testament, it tells us that salvation is of the Gentiles, so every nation. And it tells you not just the Israelites are the chosen ones now. It says everyone is chosen. You you're going to tell... A Gentile that he not chosen because he 
not an Israelite or he don't follow everything from the um from the um from the Old Testament. Let's go into Second Kings. Matter of fact, let's go in the New Testament, and then I'm gonna give you a couple more scriptures uh, about this. Let's go into Matthew 22 verse 34 through 40. Matthew 22 verse 34 through 40. But when the Pharisees had heard that he put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, Hang all the law and the prophets. So he's telling us how to keep the law, how to keep the commandments. And these are great commandments. And on these two, hang all the law and the prophets. That's in Matthew. Now, going to James. Chapter 2, verse 10 through 13. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So if you don't kill, but you commit adultery, you got multiple wives, you a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. That's James. Now go in the book of Acts. Fifteen twenty-four. The book of Acts, chapter fifteen, verse twenty-four. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law, the laws of Moses, to whom we gave no such commandment. Y'all hear that? It say we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. So, it lets you know right here. They wrote letters. Look. They sent. Now this was this was a letter. I'm gonna read the whole thing. Then it please then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard, See, so Syria and Cilicia. Now let's look on this map, y'all. Look on this map real quick. Just want to show y'all. They were in Antioch, which is right here. Hold on. They were in Antioch, which is right here. That's Antioch. Cilicia is right here. See? So they wasn't just right into the same nation. This is a whole nother nation, Cilicia. And Syria. Uh, 
You see the church in Laodicea? That was in Asia. So when you hear about the seven churches in the book of Revelations, these are not just, the, the, these are all different nations. This is why there's no excuse for the Asians and them that say they believe in Buddha as God. Y'all been warned. Y'all got the gospel. So we go back into the book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 24. It says, and they wrote letters by them after this manner, the apostles and elders and brethren sent greeting unto the brethren, which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria or Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good to us. It seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it lets you know, they say don't stay away from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. So meats offer the idols and, and then they sent Judas and Silas, but I just wanted to let y'all know that they telling you that you got to keep the law. They, they, what they are doing, they are troubling you with words, subverting your souls. Jesus said he going to save your soul. They subvert in your souls. That's the word. You can't change this. But watch this. I'm going to find more scriptures for this topic. Because this topic need, needed to be talked about. I don't know if I did a stream on it. But since we're here, I got more scriptures on this. This ain't it. Are we under the law of Moses? Do the Hebrew Israelites, are they the only ones that's chosen? Do they got to teach everybody the law still? I got... We are not under the law of Moses. I got some more stuff written about chosen ones, though. Got to find it. Read some of y'all comments. If you need to talk, brother, email me. Amen. Pick up adventures. Gameplay. Amen. Shouldn't read scripture in English. What you saying? I should read it in Hebrew? Don't read it in English. Why? I thought I was doing all well reading it in English. Learn Greek. What's the difference? What's the benefit of learning Greek? See, I keep getting, we are not under the law of Moses. I'm not seeing that chosen ones stuff that I got written about that. Hold on. I got two pages. We not under the law of Moses. Y'all know Rumpelstiltskin was, was evil, right? It was a... It was something about Rumpelstiltskin. His 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 life, he was like some type of um, witch or something like that. But that whole movie is that whole cartoon or whatever it was. It was definitely wicked and evil. Rumpelstiltskin was practicing witchcraft. He wore that hat and stuff. But it's a, it's 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 a it's a it's a biblical teaching on that. But I can't. It's, it, can't remember all the details so it ain't coming to me this is what we just went through
because we are not under the law of Moses. And we just went over that. So hopefully it's somewhere back here. So once again, the lost books of Jasher, they are written by a whole bunch of different people. They came out in the 16th century. One of them is written by the Mormons, the book of Jasher. See, I started to do my research on can a man have 300 concubines like Solomon? You see that? I'm not done, though. It's a lot more research that got to be done. Because now I got to go back and find out all the men that had more than one wife in the Old Testament, study their lives and give details and, info and knowledge and wisdom on why and things explain things like that. So this is going to take some time. The biblical, I mean, the Bible is basic instructions before leaving earth. Diamond love. A lot of people repeat that. God don't say that in his word. The word Bible. Show me what chapter and verse is the word Bible in the scriptures. It calls it scriptures. It says search the scriptures for for within them. You will see that they're written of me. It is saying. It always say the scriptures. It says the book of prophecy. It never says the Bible in, the, in anywhere in the text of the 66 books. You won't see the Bible anywhere. So it says the word of God. It says the book of prophecy. It says the scriptures. Can't think of something else right now. The word Bible ain't in the Bible. The word Christianity not in the Bible. The word Saturday not in the Bible. The word Sunday not in the Bible. It say first day, second day, third day. It go to stream on BE Perfect. Y'all keep saying ain't nobody perfect. We all make mistakes. Well, this ain't what these scriptures say. It say, be ye perfect. Let me see. If I can't find that, we'll jump into this. Here we go. I knew it was somewhere. So we might do God is perfect, but I definitely found what I was looking for. Just a few more scriptures dealing with the chosen ones topic. And I'm about to answer y'all questions too. Deuteronomy 9, 5, not for the righteous or for the uprightness of thine heart. Dost thou go to possess their land, but for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God doth drove them, drove them out from before thee. And that he may perform the word which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, that was mentioning dealing with the chosen ones, right? Not for thy righteousness or for the uprightness of thine heart, dost thou go to possess their land, but for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God dope drove them out from. These nations was practicing wickedness and God drove them out. So he can bring new leadership 
and governance and judgment and justice inside these lands before thee and that he may perform the word which the Lord swear unto thy fathers Abraham Isaac and Jacob can you sing the Psalms I tried to sing that psalm yesterday and it was people around me so I didn't get I didn't get like able to really get into my singing voice like that but I'm gonna start singing some of the psalms Maybe I'll start over and just try to sing a song a day or something like that. I don't want to do it right now, though, Crystal, because it'll mess up the momentum we'll be talking about. If you still hearing like when we get through this topic, what I'm finishing, I'll, I'll, I'll sing it, some songs, because I want to jump into Isaiah 42 and 1. I'm still about to answer a lot of y'all questions. Anybody need me to pray for them? Isaiah 42 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 4 is in reference to the Hebrew Israelites. All right, I got it right now, brother. Hold on. Let me read this one. Isaiah 42 and 1. Behold, my servant whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. So bringing judgment to the Gentiles is also bringing salvation to the Gentiles. Remember, the Gentiles didn't have a law, but they did what was lawful to them because the law was written in their hearts. And you said Deuteronomy chapter nine, verse four. Speak not thou in thine heart. After that, the Lord thy God hath, hath cast them out from before thee. Hold on. Deuteronomy 9 and 4 says, Speak not thou in thine heart. After that, the Lord thy God hath cast them out from before thee, saying, For my righteousness the Lord hath brought me in to possess this land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord doth drive them out from before thee. Okay. Somebody said, Jesus is not God. Jesus in the word of God, it says, I and my father are one. Matter of fact, Jesus didn't just say, I and my father are one. When Jesus died and he rose the third day, Thomas touched Jesus on his side and he said, my Lord and my God. Many people called him the Messiah, the Christ, prophet. What's up, Travisti? Joshua fought the battle against Jericho. So is that the battle with the 300 men? No, that was Gideon. Y'all know they made that movie. 300 Spartacus off that scripture that you hear about with the 300 men from Gideon in the word of God. They made that a movie. Somebody said, grow your beard, brother. It's in the law. I don't keep the law, all, all of the laws of Moses. I keep the law of Christ. God said there's no condemnation to those who walk not after the spirit. I mean, excuse me, God said there's no condemnation for those who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. These are the laws of Christ. Yeah, giving you the good news, y'all all know that Jesus Christ loves y'all. He want a relationship with him, with you, if you don't have a relationship with him. So this right here is inspiration and, and encouraging you to want to live for God and read his word and get closer with him, have a better relationship with him. Does anybody need prayer? All men are chosen who choose Christ. Exactly, Johnny Greens. And that goes with what you said. It goes right with there's neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, but all are one in Christ Jesus.
God chooses. Get rid of fake drug dealers off New Park's estate. May peace be upon you, whoever you are. Let you know God has a people that he hold up over others. Where's the tribe of Benjamin now? I mean, who are they? When you learn about the Benjamites, that's who Paul was. Paul was a Benjamin, Benjamite. But I haven't read too much about them in the Old Testament, so I would have to do more studying to let you know. They were a tribe of warriors. It let you know that, though. They was warriors, strong warriors. It let you know that. But I, I, would, I wouldn't be able to tell you who they are specifically today. Like, where, what is the country name and stuff like that? I have to do a little more studying on that. I'm sorry, brother. I'm Muslim. If you can properly explain the Trinity, I'll become Christian. So the Christian is, um, the uh, Trinity is dealing with three different persons in the Godhead, they say, right? But it says these three, it says it's three in heaven that agree. And these three agree in one. Father. Son, Holy Spirit. And there is three in earth, and these three agree in one. Water, blood, spirit. So it tells you the three in heaven, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are one. Not three different persons, not the Trinity, one. And then the three on earth, water, blood, and spirit. Or no, flesh, blood, and spirit. Not water, blood, and spirit. The three in heaven are Father, Son, Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit. And then the three on earth is flesh, blood, and spirit. And these three all agree in one. So it's no such thing as the Trinity. The word Holy Trinity not even in the Bible. When it explains that, it don't say Trinity. So I don't get where people come up with that. But I hope that helped you out, brother. Matter of fact, if anybody want to give me that chapter and verse, I want to explain it with him. I want to explain it clear for him. Reading the chapter and verses. And we got a, a lot of comments. I'm about to get to all of these. Somebody say Deuteronomy 9 and 4. Oh, we read that. Brother, God doesn't change. James, always write God with a capital G. Lowercase g could be small gods or false gods. He said there's two types of Gentiles. One van, one van of zero says second Philippians chapter two, verse 10 through 11. All right, let's see where we going there. Second. Well, Philippians chapter two, verse 10 through 11. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. No, at the name of Muhammad. No, the name of Moses. You know, Aaron had the priesthood and stuff. No, it says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Why you never see Kevin Gates or all these rappers that want to mock Jesus Christ, Cat Williams and all these people? Why you don't never see none of these people talking about Buddha or Muhammad like that? Cat Williams talking about this chain that I got on my neck. You see, this is what you see all the Anunnaki's wear. So he's claiming that he's an Anunnaki. That's a different doctrine, brothers and sisters. He said it's a it's a time measuring compass. 
He said this, this is what his watch and his chain, he got his own brand. It means like woke folk or folk woke or something like that. And they asked him on Joe Rogan Experience interview. And he said, this thing that you see on my wrist and my, my name, um, my brand, he said, this is what the Anunnaki dudes wear. He said, it's a, it's a time. He said, it's a, it's a compass. He said, it's a, it's a compass that keeps the time or something like that. So I broke it all down, brothers and sisters. I, I don't know if I put the video out or it's coming out, but we got some coming for that. Jesus Christ loves you, Cat Williams. Give your life to him. All that stuff you following is the fallen angels. These are the fallen angels that they was talking about in the Bible. That's why he talking all this stuff, the Anunnaki's. That's why he was talking about the craft in his last interview. It took me a while to put this together. And I want to thank one of the brothers who did that stream showing that what does Cat Williams believe? Because that opened my eyes a little bit more. I already was saying certain things. I already knew certain things. But now I get it. Love was the greatest gift according to some they said love cancel a multitude of sins love cast out fear so yeah love was something that was always highly exalted love is the most powerful weapon on this earth love i always used to say that before i was walking with christ love was the greatest gift according to some scripture says there are only 12 gates in the kingdom Phil Negro, let's go back into these Bible verses. Let's go into Matthew 22, 14. Hopefully we can answer your question. Matthew 22, 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. All of them children from Israel was called, but only a few was chosen. Remember, a lot of them went after the false gods. They went to sacrifice food to idols. This is why we had the laws, because we wouldn't have had the laws if they wasn't doing things that was against God. So this is why we have all these laws from the Old Testament. They wasn't following all in the um, Torah. They wasn't keeping the law. You said, that means you can guarantee it's in the New Testament as well as the Old. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time you can. Most things. Hello, young man. Jason J. J. May peace be upon you. Crystal Lynn Dawn Day Chef. If you add up numbers on a the clock, they equal 12. As well, add 11 and 2. You get 12. I don't know how you get that. Adultery is not having multiple wives. Show me what God said adultery is not having multiple wives in his word, because I can show you from Exodus to, to Titus where it says, let the bishops be the husband of one wife. Show you in Exodus where it say thou shalt not commit adultery. Exodus chapter 20, verse 14, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is in thy neighbors. So this in the Old Testament, it talks about manservants and maidservants. But in the New Testament, it says the law is made for men stillers and, and um, basically people who have servants. So it didn't justify it in the New Testament. This is why I say, is anyone bond? Let him become free. Daniel, hey, what's up? May peace be upon you. One Vana says, Islam says God is one. However, with no further explanation, this seems as though there is no substance to the Quranic God, but he's God the Father, his word, Jesus Christ, and his spirit. Getting into the word. Matthew, Metanoia. Yes, yes. May peace be upon you. Why would you want to be an Israelite when the new Israel? It, well, Christianity is not in the Bible, but you mean the Christian faith or Christians. That's the word in the Bible. That's true. But 
Christianity is what they created when you see they only go to church on Sunday. They take tithes and offerings. Constantine with people wearing all these crosses and stuff. That's what Christian Christianity created. But when we read in Matthew 24, 31, it tells us. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So it's telling you he going to send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. This, to this telling you about when the son of man come in heaven, it's going to appear a sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. He going to come in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. I got Colossians chapter three, verse 12 through 17. Colossians chapter three, verse 12 through 17 says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Getting back to your questions real quick. Only 12 gates with 12 angels with the 12 names of the 12 tribes of Israel. It says 12 tribes. It says it's going to be 12,000 out of 12 tribes. That's going to um, be selected when, when tribulation and stuff come. But hold up. Where does it say God is not a Buddha? Huh? Buddha is not God. Buddha is a false God. They don't say nothing about Buddha because Buddha wasn't mentioned when the scriptures came out. You might got to read. Re retype that question because it seemed like you 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 made a typo or something. According as he hath chosen us and him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? It's a God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him, not just to the Israelites. Are ye not then partial in yourselves? And are become judges of evil thoughts. For, uh, I got First Chronicles sixteen and thirteen, and I got one more. 
and then I'm answer every question. Let me see what First Chronicles 16 and 13 is saying. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. So it lets us know in the Old Testament that Israel, his servant, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Now, when you had these men of God that had other wives and they were from different nations, these men have children, not from different nations. They were mostly all Israelites. But some of these men, like Mo, like um, Solomon, he had wives that was following the false gods. So this is how you'll see Chronicles 16 and 13 start to make sense because... O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. So all Jacob's children. They always say Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they said, if we, we be Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, that's the word. Luke 18 and 17 is the last one I'm going to leave y'all with. And then we're going to answer some questions. Luke 18 and 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. And then if we got time, I get into this. Be ye perfect. Y'all all say ain't no one perfect. Only God is perfect. We all make mistakes. That ain't what the word of God say. It teaches us how to be perfect. It says, if you want to be perfect, sell everything that you have and give to the poor. And come follow me. So Buddha is not God. Buddha is a false God. All of a sudden. Here we go. This thing is acting like. It just paused on me. I can't. Yo, I don't know if y'all can hear me, if y'all can see me. I'm having a little difficulties with this connection. Here we go, here we go, here we go. We back. I'm sorry, y'all. They messed up my connection real quick. Um, Let me see. Go back to all y'all comments. There's no capital. Trinity is description, is a description. Somebody said you speak French. Nah, I don't speak French. Someone says Martin Estrada. Should you kill if God tell you? I don't think it's nowhere in God's word where he tells us to kill, brother. He tells us to be strong in the Lord. He tells us to avoid evil, avoid um, contentions, avoid confrontations. It says depart from evil. It doesn't. It says vengeance belongs to the Lord. So it tells us that we can't repay. Don't repay evil for evil. God don't tell you to kill. God wants to get all of the vengeance. That's what he said. I'm a jealous God. He said, vengeance belongs to me. I'll repay. I am Muslim. And I got a question. Sadal Sal, come with it. Mark 12 and 29. Oh, yeah. And then you said, should we kill you? Um, I want to finish answering your question. 
Martin Estrada, should you kill if God tell you? So when the soldiers came to Jesus, they asked him, what shall we do to be saved? He said, do violence to no man, be content with your wages and don't, don't do no false witnesses. Don't swear on, don't, you know, speak falsely of no man. Don't accuse no man falsely. Be content with your wages and do violence to no man. So God won't tell you to kill. So let's deal with what Drek said. Mark 12, 29. Mark 12, 29. And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. So it says here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So Buddha's not God. Muhammad's not God. If Muhammad was talking to the same God that we read about, in the scriptures, his prophecy wouldn't go so much against everything that we know about God. He didn't say he was an Anunnaki. All right, you're right. Third, third world wonder. He said this chain, this time piece that this um, because he said, what is the watch and the necklace that you got on? It's a specific brand. He said, what does it represent? What does it mean? Cat Williams said. This this watch and this this um, necklace that you see me with the brand this represents. He said this is the thing that all the Anunnaki's used to wear. He, he said this is the thing that you see all the Anunnaki's wear. He said it's a time. He said it's a time. A something time compass. He said it's basically a time compass. Now when you go in the compass, I already did the video. I broke it down. When you go in the Freemasonry, they talk about the compass and the square. That's the main tools that they use. They put it all out in our face. So he's talking about this is a time compass on his medallion and his watch. That's what it is. Okay, that, that you see the Anunnaki's wear. You talking about the craft in the interview on Club Shay Shay. You, you, that's all I got to show. I said all that in my short too. So it's coming soon. It's coming. Ubastan, Ubekistan. So we got brothers in here from Ubekistan. May peace be upon you. You Ubekistan, excuse me. Ubekistan, Ubekistan, Ubekistan. Let's go to LEM Hebrews. We're gonna read your comment. Hebrews, chapter one. Verse 5 through 12. Or did we just read that? I don't think so. For unto which, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father. And he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. And then the Bible tells you, be careful entertaining strangers, because some of you have entertained angels unawares. There you go. Third war wonder. So the Anunnaki are the Nep, Nep, what is it? Nephilim, the giants of old. So they tell you that you had these 35 foot giants, 40 foot. They wasn't that tall, brothers and sisters. They was tall. It's like you see people, real tall people today. You see short people today. But they try to make it like these people was giants and stuff like that. If the Anunnaki's was that tall, 
How come when the flood came with Noah, they didn't make it? They couldn't climb nowhere to save themselves. You get what I'm saying? Giants is, is like, you talking about somebody that got a little bit more of access to his, to his, to like, he can do different things that normal people can't do. You got stronger bones and if you're a giant you should just it, you'd be you're not the same as a person that's just normal height but it lets you know it don't matter if they was giants whoever they was they couldn't make it past the flood when the when the world ended with noah love in the bible defined as keeping the commandments so you're saying love is keeping the commandments. John 10 and 30, I and my father are one. There you go. We don't got to read that. We already know that. Say that. You got right. You got that right. April Bay. Amen. It's good that you're talking about this. Love from Norway. Rebecca, may peace be upon you. Love back to Norway. Who are the bishops? In the, in the um, New Testament. Titus was a bishop. I can't, I'm not even going to get up here and try to guess. I just tell you Titus was a bishop. I believe. My, no. I was going to say James. I'll be happy when our people finally wake up and realize Jacob is the father of one nation slash race of people, the black African people. This oppression we're still, we're still experiencing should be confirmation. Tony Butler. It's sort of like that thing with Adam and Eve. Farrakhan, I got to get this video and put it out for y'all. Farrakhan done corrupted the word of God. This is why if you're not steadfast in the word, you can be deceived and, put, and pulled and tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Farrakhan confesses that he professes that he's a Muslim. But he's reading out the Bible trying to use Adam and Eve to tell you something about a Freemasonic secret society and how this relates to all this stuff. But he's misrepresenting the word of God. He's not rightly dividing it. No other time you hear Farrakhan preaching out the word of God, but you want to use God's word to try to say. Um, he, He's like black people started all this and we made y'all walk across the hot sand and like. This come from Adam and like he just mixed up the word of God and corrupted it. So I will be showing that video when Farrakhan did that. Somebody says, hi, how are you all? We all blessed if we here today and we breathing. God left us here. He got us doing his will. We bless. We can read his word. We can teach his word. We can exhort one another, edify. It says, it's medicine to the soul. Someone that speak with the knowledge and wisdom of God is medicine to the soul, but a wicked tongue, it bring 
sicknesses and stuff like that. That's in Proverbs or something like that. A merry heart is like medicine to the soul. Brian, post scripture, Brian Watson, Ali Javid. But it's not just about the black African people because it's all, it's a lot of nations are being oppressed. We seen the Ukraine people, they was calling out for help. You see all these other countries, they trying to escape over to America. People keep coming across the border and it's, it's not just black people. It's every nation is being oppressed. And why are they being oppressed? Because nobody want to live for God. Nobody want to follow the laws of God. Everybody want to lean on their own understanding and do what they want to do. This is why you got all these wars and stuff like Haiti. They don't want that man in the office. They want to control their, they feel like he's not doing right for the people or whatever they feel. Nobody's being led by the word of God. But at the same time, what we're seeing is that is prophecy being fulfilled over there in Haiti. No matter how bad it look, it's prophecy being fulfilled. It's just that we're not used to seeing that type of action, like violence and taking over a whole country, going to the airport, trying to take over the airport. We ain't we we only used to seeing that in movies. Unless you like been in the military and you been through other countries and stuff, we not used to seeing that type of stuff. So people don't know how to react to it. Let God keep all of y'all safe. Yeah. Scotty P says, pray for me, brother. All right, Scotty P. Um, what is this? Anything specifically you want me to pray for you? I just pray that Jesus gives you peace, good health, and a spirit that's the spirit that's inside of him. He leaves his spirit and gives it to you so you can open your eyes more and see more of the scriptures, understand more about life. You can get through all hardships, cast all your cares and your worries upon him. And you won't have too much problems in life like other people go through. Your mind will be clear. You'll be able to see the truth for what it is. You won't be deceived. I just, I pray that God comes into your heart in Jesus name and once God come into your heart you become renewed your mind start to get transformed it makes you you want to read his word and then you start to feel like I don't just want to read it I need to read it I can't go a day without reading it and that's when transformation your mind is being transformed and that's when change is starting to happen you no longer who you used to be. All old things pass away. You a new creature. And when they say there's no condemnation to those that be in Christ, a lot of people really go by that. Yo, I was talking to my um the dude that he's at the laundry mat. His name is Tom. He's a he's a Christian Caucasian man. Now I was telling him stuff about how I was upset about like things that happened in my in my house. How some of my stuff would end up missing and stuff. He's like. You know you got to forgive her, right? My mom ain't even no Christian and he telling me I got to forgive her. So that's just the heart of a man of God. You always want to forgive for, forgive people, always, no matter what they do. It might be hard, it might hurt, and you might slip up sometimes. But the more you could just put this in your heart and be around people that have it in their heart, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you at peace. You're going to be at so much peace. When people do things, no matter if they do it on purpose or by mistake, if it's wicked and evil, you won't really react to it the same way as if you, before you would learn how to forgive. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Brian, you said explain. Explain what? 
Lena says, hi, my love. And I'm here. If anyone is still awake, I can help in anything. If I have a few more to talk with my friends or just say, hey. Okay, Lena. If you can help in anything, send me some biblical scriptures to my email on things that we see today that's occurring that the Bible is prophesying about or anything that you think that would need to be talked about. I know this one sister said, hey, can you speak more about the gang stalking and the targeting? Maybe get, get a, a interview from somebody who's been through it and got got like um, can show and prove what they've been through. So if anybody has been through targeting and gang stalking, y'all can send me an email because I'm looking to reach out and interview some of those people. I always tell my testimony of how I'm being gang stalked and targeted. But I, it, it would be a beautiful thing to find someone else. Said, no, is this a bedtime storyline? No, it's not. LEM. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 5 through 12. God is coming, not Jesus. Jesus is God. When Jesus died, when he died on the cross, he gave up the ghost. But before he died, he said, Lama, Lama, Shabbat. Uh, he, he starts speaking in uh, Hebrew. And when he said that, the whole sky turned black. Anybody know what that mean? What he said? He said, my God. Is, is that is that what he said? My God, why have thou forsaken me? And then the sky turned black. I'm going to get this gas real quick, brother. And we're going to read the rest of this. Hebrews 1 and 5. We're going all in. We're not going nowhere. I might be here another two, three hours. Let's see what else we got. Somebody says, D. Dot Judah says, Jesus is not God. I got a whole bunch of scriptures written down. I don't know if I got them all on a piece of paper or if I just got to research them, but I could show you the scriptures to prove that. You got witnesses like Thomas coming and touching Jesus on his side, calling him God, saying, my Lord and my God. Um, can I get, what pump am I at? I think it's pump seven. Can I get 10 on pump seven, please? Yeah. You just got off a of, uh, live with a black woman regarding tarot cards. That stuff is like trying to practice magic and witchcraft. Thank you. Have a good one. You got a scripture. You got a, a verse in the scriptures where it say there were, people was practicing curious arts and they had these books, expensive books. But once they seen how the apostles was moving and it, the power that they had, that they was walking in, they said they took all eight books, they counted the price, they, they, they put them all together and burnt them in the fire in front of everybody. Stuff like that they was doing to show they faith. Right now, you can get a free foot Hold on. This car is cold a little. Yeah, they would do things like that to show their faith. They had strong faith. Now you say Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 through 11. Did we read that already? Because I'm about to go ahead. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 11.
right, we have Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 through 11. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So it tells us Jesus was God among mortal men. He was God in the flesh. He didn't have no sin. He was equal with God. He told you, I and my father are one. My father work either two and I do too. So who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So all the kings in the Old Testament, Jesus is their king. Y'all don't want to play with me, brothers and sisters. Hold on. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Head inside and grab the new rain This is why all in the Old Testament, every time they talk about the Lord of hosts, they talking about Jesus Christ. And then they double back on it in the New Testament. It say, not just the King of the Jews, he the King of all kings, and then the Lord of all lords. And then the brother, I love you, brother, for that beautiful wonderful chapter and verse in philippians it just told you that the same thing but a different way it says philippians chapter 2 verse 6 through 11 it says and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth so this name is above every name. That's Moses, that's Aaron, that's Abraham, that's Isaac, that's Jacob. Anybody you put in, the, in them scriptures, Jesus' name is above all of them names. See, I want to thank you, brother, because I never thought about that like that when I when I first the first time I read it. It's just starting to come to me now. That's powerful. That's so powerful. That's amazing. That's wonderful right there. We working today. We going to work. I should have wore my I should have wore a surgical jacket suit. One of them the the the, 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 the hospitals wear. Because we go I mean, we we dissecting and giving surgery with these scriptures today. We going deep into the spirit. We dividing us the we divide in the thought in the spirit and the soul and all that. Remember, the word of God is a double-edged sword. Do it say dividing the spirit or dividing dividing asunder the spirit? And, and so if it divides the spirit, and it tells us that many people had unclean spirits, and Jesus had to cast out the unclean spirits out of people, it tells you the word of God. To preach that word and and you can heal people remember they said just preach the word only and my servant to be healed so it's it's showing and confirming and letting us know with many different scriptures that this word of god being preached is 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 medicine to the soul it it it, it divides your your, your spirit the, your, your thoughts and your intentions it'll cut down every unclean spirit you got inside you you got a spirit of lust, the word of God will divide that and show it and prove and, and cast it out in Jesus' name. You got a spirit of hatred, jealousy, the word of God will divide that through the scriptures, being rightfully divided, and it will cast it out and it will convict you. It all the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So what you speak out of your heart, that's what that's what your spirit 
that's the type of spirit that you have inside of you what whether it be good or bad so if you know the word of god you know how to do righteous judgment versus all spirits jesus said every word i speak is spirit should i go down here yeah i mean be cool today so yeah brothers and sisters this is real this is like man we this is you ain't gonna learn this in no seminary school you can't learn this up in in church because they only go for an hour we have in church for real like this is the closest thing to a biblical church that i feel that i'm gonna get because i don't think i'm gonna find it going outside of myself i think everything that i need in christ is gonna come from my heart and then other people will see and they might be on the same type of relationship with the creator and then we can fellowship more on news on these type of things but them brothers when they was in the scriptures they were standing with each other for, for for a long time some of them was with each other for years and they was preaching every day they said they ceased not to preach every day in the temple boldly after they told them i told y'all don't teach in this name and y'all filled up all jerusalem with your doctrine they were trying to tell them to leave out the country and stuff they ceased not to teach as soon as they got out of prison they stopped they kept went back to start preaching about jesus i just got off another, uh, another live of a black woman reading tarot cards we read through that you said jesus is not god if you're not translating the scripture you're wasting your time with interpolations action potential I read the scripture and just just make it easier to understand. There ain't no need to translate it from Hebrew to Greek. The Bible was already translated. That's what King James did. So if I if I wanted to learn Hebrew, I would go buy the Hebrew Bible. Y'all talking about the Ethiopian Bible is good to study. Did God say go outside the word or did he say don't take an add to the word? Y'all want us to study the Hebrew Israelite Bible. I mean, the Ethiopian Bible, excuse me. Y'all saying that's the oldest Bible and stuff like that. But didn't God say, don't take an ad to the word? So why we got to go outside? If look, if the if the book of Jasher has a whole bunch of different authors that wrote the book of Jasher, so you can get different ones. You got the Mormons that produce one of the book of Jasher's. Why would we go outside of God's word? and read the Ethiopian Bible. I think it's a scripture where it say, only let your speech becometh of the gospel. Isaiah 33, 22. He quoted scripture when he said, Jesus is not God. So let's answer his question. Sorry, y'all, forgive me. Y'all want me to hide or be real? I could turn the camera around and then, but I, I can be real. Isaiah 33, 22. I'm going to try to hold this. Take it out my mind. Isaiah, I'm going to show y'all how powerful God is. I'm not even going to think about this real quick. Let's lock it up. Isaiah 420. 33 22 Isaiah 33 22 says for the Lord is our judge the Lord is our lawgiver the Lord is our king he will save us all right so You don't think that this is talking about. So it says the Lord is our king. But it says Jesus Christ is the king of all kings. He said he's the Lord of all lords. So. Who you think this is talking about, brothers and sisters? Look, I'm glad you gave me Isaiah because now you gave me Isaiah 32. 
and 22. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. I'm about to make this harmonize. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. You think that it's talking about God. I'm telling you it's talking about Jesus. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So it's letting us know prophesying Jesus will come in Isaiah, the same chapter that you just gave me and said Jesus is not God. I gave you that same prophet who prophesied Jesus is God. See? Now give me something else, brother. You got Luke 4 and 8. We're going we gonna to go there too. You got Luke 4 and 8. Luke chapter 4 and verse 8. Let's see what we got. I feel like we about to hit thousands, 20,000 maybe on this view. All glory be to God. On this video, we might hit 15,000 or 20,000. Luke 4 and 8. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So Jesus told him, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, God is a spirit. Now, we know God's word. So, when, when Jesus came, he was in the flesh telling him that he is God. He said, I and my father are one. So how are you going to disconnect it and say, we don't follow Jesus, we follow God. Or, or, we, Jesus said, I and my father are one. He spoke only with the laws of God. And he told y'all where they they um couldn't keep certain laws in the Old Testament. So he fulfilled the law and came and made things better. No more sacrifices for sins. He says in Luke chapter 4, verse 21, and he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. You hear that? He said the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Now, remember we was reading about yesterday and it said, John the Baptist came as Elias or Elijah. Now we got another chapter. It says, Luke chapter 4 and verse 25. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. So the heaven was shut up three years and six months. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. Now we go on a little bit somewhere else on that, but I just wanted to show y'all something that we were speaking about yesterday. Jesus Christ is the son of God. He was God in the flesh. He came and said, I and my father are one. When they said he making himself equal with God because he called himself the son of man he said that's they the, the pharisees they said that's blasphemy see y'all still don't get this to this day i don't know if y'all hebrew israelites or what but y'all still think that jesus is not god and god is the father and no jesus said i and my father are one jesus is part of the godhead just like the holy spirit same spirit different personalities i don't believe that brother I don't I don't see that in the scriptures. That's why I don't believe it. I know that Jesus came in the form of God. He was God in a in the physical in the, in the flesh among mortal men. So everything he did was from God. Everything he did and told us it was directly from God. 
to me, this people called Jews are not the true Jews because Moses married the Ethiopia and they are black. So saying Moses married the Ethiopian and they are black. This is why the Bible talks about whether Jew nor Greek bond or free because they don't want us to put all our time into that nation and tribe stuff like how they was doing back in Israel when God told Israelites they was the chosen people. It's when, he, when the word was preached to the Gentiles, now it don't matter if you a Jew or a Greek, we all one in Christ Jesus. So Israelites had favor because they were the law that God gave them the law to teach other nations. But once Jesus came, he was an Israelite. He went to go to the Israelites to teach. They didn't want to hear him. He went to the Gentiles. So it's no longer about what who what people look like. It's about what the spirit is. King David was called Lord. David called Jesus his Lord. He said, if David is his older than him, then how do David call him Lord in the spirit? That's what it says. It says, David said unto his Lord. No, David said. To Jesus, my Lord, sit down on my right hand while I make thy enemies thy footstool. Turn it up. Reading the script. Somebody said wives and concubines. Yeah, that's not biblical, brother. Them Hebrew Israelites can't show you no teachings where Jesus Christ taught about having concubines. He said if a man be put away from his wife, he said let him be reconciled unto her. It didn't say go marry another wife. That's adultery. Romans 10 and 13. Everyone that calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So they had more than one wife because polygamy is lawful. No, it's not. That's where we're going in right now. It says, it says, let the husbands, let the bishops be the husband of one wife in Titus. Let me see if I can give y'all that in Titus. If y'all want to show me, I'm kind of back up on a, on a comment. So I'm going to just try to go straight from the word. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children. So go to Titus chapter 1 and verse 6. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife. If you got more than one wife, you got blame. See, this is why when the apostles was being made, they couldn't take their wives and children with them. They had to leave their family. This is different than the Old Testament. Whole different spirit. But the same law and everything still being fulfilled that from the old, but it's telling you, you cannot be having all these wives. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly for the, for a bit, it says it again, watch this. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God. Not self-willed, not so angry, not giving the wine, no striker, no striker, not giving the filthy lucre. It says, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. But it says, It says it again, though. Hold on, I'm looking for it. Well, 
I think it don't say it again. I'm sorry. It says it in other chapters, but we just, we just not, you get what I'm saying? If anyone be blameless, the husband of one wife. It's, it's another part where it says qualifications for bishops. And it says, let the bishops be the husband of one wife. It's in, I think it's in Corinthians or Timothy. Even he's tired of the bullocks. God is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm not going. I'm not going back and forth on that. I'm, I'm in agreement with that. I just think it could be explained a little bit more, but you can only type so much in a comment that you're trying to get your point across. So I, I'm in agreement with that, LEM. Amen. But Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are not separate. They are all one. Hopefully you agree with that. Are you in America? Yeah. I'm in America, upstate New York. So I'm like an hour away from Albany and like maybe an hour away from New York City. I'm upstate New York, so. About 45 minutes from the Bronx, an hour from Manhattan, Harlem, New York City, and like an hour from the capital of New York, Albany. LEM, that's wrong. You saying that's wrong, I said I agree with him. God is Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is the best person in the world and he is the most perfect person or thing that has ever created. He created a secret, created our world. Okay. Brian Watson says, stop contradicting yourself. I'm not contradicting myself. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image and our likeness so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals. You're saying read Isaiah 7 and 14, then read John 5 and 43. This is proof that his name is not Jesus, a common Latin name. Read Deuteronomy 28 and finally discover that Jacob is the father of only black people. So, Y'all take this one scripture. A lot of Hebrew Israelites, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And y'all be trying to prove that Jacob was black. But Jesus Christ ain't teach like that, brothers and sisters. The word black ain't even in the Bible. It don't talk about black and white people. As a race, you don't see that. It described black as darkness. And they say they, they close to being white raiment, but they don't talk about races of people, black and white. Man created that. So, yeah, well, I don't want to skip this dude's question. He got a lot of chapters and verses in here, so I don't want to just leave you hanging. I'm going to read every chapter and verse you got, and we're going to dissect. We're going to speak about this. So Isaiah Let's get straight into it Isaiah Seven and fourteen Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel is being interpreted God with us. So Jesus is not God, but they tell you they're going to call his name Emmanuel. And that's being interpreted God with us. Am I right or wrong? That's in a whole nother scripture. It says that in the New Testament. And they called him Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. And then read John chapter 5, verse 43. 
this don't prove that his name is not Jesus. You just saying that, call his name Emmanuel. That mean God with us. He had more than seven titles. His name was Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the Lord and Savior, the King of all kings, the King of the Jews, God. Um, he had many, the King of Israel, he had many different names. Emmanuel. So we go into John chapter 5, verse 43. I am come in my father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. So he's saying, I am come in my father's name. But I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. So he's telling you that I come in my father's name and you receive me not. He's saying, I'm God. My father's name is God. I'm God. You don't receive me, though. You thinking that I'm making myself equal with God. I'm telling you, I'm the son of God. He said, my father work and he I do too, he the two. He said, I and my father are one. That's not telling you that he's God. Y'all don't get these teachings, brothers and sisters. We're going to continue. I'm glad you put these scriptures because I wouldn't have been able to say this and speak this like this without you showing and proving what need to be interpreted and broke down. This is proof that his name is not Jesus. No, it's not, brother. A common Latin name. Read Deuteronomy 28 and finally discover that Jacob is the father of only black people. Now, you might be right on that last part, but the first two, I'm sure that we just seem different. He had many different names, titles, but his name was Jesus Christ. The son of God or the true. They called him the true and living God. They called them so many different names, brothers and sisters. That's a whole, we, we'd be able to write a whole half a Bible, like just naming all the names that Jesus was called, called the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Come on, brother. Since he have too many names, but he's not God, right? Deuteronomy 28 and finally discover that Jacob is the father of black people. So you want me to read the whole Deuteronomy 28 or where? It talks about God will bless Israel. It talks about the land of plenty. It talks about curses for disobeying God. It says, but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken at Deuteronomy 28, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Curse shall be thou in the city, and curse shall thou be in the field. Jesus came and took away a lot of these curses because they couldn't keep none of the law. This is why I said, cursed is anyone who don't continue in the whole law. This is what it's telling you right here, the same thing, but a different way. It's saying it in a different way. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. This is telling you what the curses are. But in another scripture, it tells you, curse be anyone who don't continue in all the law and do those things. And this is just saying the same thing, brothers and sisters. I love you, brother. Thank you. But what do you want me to read exactly? I'm going to have to go down a whole bunch of comments to get to what you're saying. But I'm going to try to um, just read the, the titles of each chapter. As you can see, like before you get into the chapter, they have the title to tell you what it's about. So I'll read the title and see if we can get to what you were saying about Jacob is the father of only black people. It says the land of plenty, curses for obeying God, captivity and plagues, land will not produce. It talks about Israel will be enslaved, plagues for disobeying, Israel will be scattered, and no ease or rest for Israel. So it's not a specific topic of the paragraph, 
dedicated to Jacob. Like when you see Moses' name right here, I don't see nothing that's dedicated to Jacob when you tell me to read Deuteronomy 28. So I would have to know it's a little more specifically. God cannot be a father and a son at the same time. What you doing, sunning yourself, makes no sense. All right, let me explain this, D-Dot Judah. Our image, read Hebrews 1, 5 through 12. Let me see. What's in there? Hebrews 1, 5 through 12. God is the Father. Jesus Christ is the Father. He's our spiritual Father. He's God. But I'm going to read Hebrews and we're going to explain this more. Remember that God is a spirit. Y'all make God seem like he's just some person that's a physical man that live in the sky. Like that's how y'all making it seem. Hebrews chapter one, verse five through 12. It says, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth and the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A sceptre of righteousness is the sceptre of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. So it's telling you the heavens are the works of the Lord hands, right? And it says they shall perish, but thou remainest and they shall, and they all shall wax old as though the garment. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Heirs of salvation. I thought salvation was only to the Jews. See, it get deep when you know how to rightly divide this word. Thank you, brother. I love you, L.E.M. That was a beautiful comment right there because I just, all I had to read was a, another little few chapters in person. Look, all right, let's go. Hebrews chapter two, verse four. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. For unto the angels hath he put for, for unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak Jesus Christ is God, brothers and sisters. I think I got a whole lesson already written for that. Let me see if I can find that. Let's go into it. How many times do they call Jesus the Messiah? 
Isaiah 9 and 6. We got Matthew chapter 1, verse 28 through 25. Matthew chapter 1, verse 28 through 25. I mean, excuse me, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. Excuse me. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now they got certain words that's written in Hebrew in here, and then they interpret it and say it means in God with us. Why they ain't write the Hebrew word of, the, uh, of Jesus if they wanted us to call him something different? Watch this, brothers and sisters. And he shall bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted is God with us. God with us. You just thought Emmanuel means something else. I'm going to show you in the scriptures, brothers and sisters. Right there. You said Jesus is not God. God's word said he is God. I love you all, but I get, I get, sometimes I get real, uh, uh, I don't want to say emotional. I get fired up. I'm on fire for God. I ain't lose it yet. Do you want to go into more scriptures or did I prove my point? They called him Messiah in over 12 scriptures. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We got 14 scriptures. Do y'all really want me to continue? I think we'll save this teaching for the, um, after I get some more questions out the way. Continue to teach, my brother. It's on God's hand. Let him handle it. Drex, that's right, brother. It is genetically impossible to be an Israelite or a Jew because it was a specific land at a specific time let me go into John chapter 1 verse 41 He first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. So, when it tells you, Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone, these are Hebrew words. Messiah, that might be a Greek word. Y'all telling me to study Greek, study Hebrew? The words are being interpreted in the Bible for us. I don't got to study nothing but God's word. Let's continue. <laughs> John chapter 4, verse 25. This is wonderful. John chapter 4, verse 25. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. So... We got John. Hey, what's up, brother? How's it going? All right. Have a good one today. What's good, man? All right. On, Enjoy your day today, brother. Bye. All right. John 4 and 25, we read that. Now let's go into Daniel chapter 9 and 25. Watch this. It's Old Testament now. Daniel. Daniel was in Old Testament. And we're going to go chapter 9, verse 25. It says, 
Know therefore and understand that from going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again in the wall, even in troublous times. Now remember it said Jesus built the Jews a synagogue out there in Jerusalem. Go do your homework, do your research. I'm giving you Daniel chapter nine, verse 25. It says, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again in the wall, even in troublous times. Jesus told them to tear down this temple and I'll build it up in three days. They said it took us 40 years to build this temple and you're going to build a new one in three days. He's talking about the temple of his body. They thought he was talking about the building. Now let's continue. Book of Acts 26 and 22. I want to get this done quick so we can get as many questions answered. I want to answer all y'all questions. If anybody else need prayer, let me know in the comment section. And try to be a little more specific. What you need prayer for. So I could pray against whatever is your issue, whatever's bothering you, whatever you need prayer for against. Now, Acts chapter 26, verse 22 says, Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses should say should come so saying none other things than those which the prophets and moses did say should come that christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should shew light unto the people and to the gentiles another confirmation we're gonna go into first samuel because i'm i want to show y'all something I don't just have to stay in the New Testament to prove Jesus Christ is God. I can go to the Old Testament on y'all. God wire his his um his his servants a little different than the world. Watch this, y'all. First Samuel chapter two and ten. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven, out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. He's he talking about Jesus. And he shall give strength unto his king. Now, and exalt the horn of his anointed. That's talking about God will exalt. But the first two chapters are talking about Jesus. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. This talking about Jesus. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. Still talking about Jesus. And he shall give strength unto his king. Now, this is. God giving strength to Jesus and exalt the horn of his anointed. Watch this though. Zechariah. See, I'm going to stay in the Old Testament. We ain't got to go to the new. Stay in the old. Go to Zechariah 12 and 1. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. Who formeth the spirit of man within him? Y'all going to say God. Who laid the foundation of the earth? Jesus did because he fulfilled all the laws that the old prophets came. I don't care if y'all try to say Abraham and this was the foundation in Genesis. Jesus was the king of all them kings. So if you get scriptures and read it with an open heart and an open mind, you're going to see so much clearer. Thank you, Lord. But I ain't done. We ain't done. Let's go into Malachi 4 and 5. Y'all always try to say, well, a man robbed God, tithes and offerings. I got something better for y'all in Malachi. This ain't going to take nothing from you. I ain't, ain't asking you for nothing, but it's giving you wisdom. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, remember when we was just talking about last night, we said 
John the Baptist came as Elijah and they knew him not, but they did whatever they want to him. So this is another scripture that I got to add on to that. Just so many revelations be coming through. Let's go into John. John chapter 1, verse 49 through 51. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of God. Thou art the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. So Nathanael answered and told him, You're the son of God, king of Israel. Now, when Jesus came is the first time you mentioned someone being heard called calling, calling the son of God. You don't hear that in the Old Testament. This is why the Pharisees got mad. They was the law. They knew all this stuff from the Old Testament. He called himself the son of God. He making himself equal with God. So they wanted to stone him and kill him. Somebody says... Um, Brian Watson, what happens if you're in a situation when someone wants to kill you? Do you lie down or kill for your safety? I'm going to tell you this. You don't do either one of them. You don't lie down and you don't kill for your safety. You speak life wherever death is. You shine your light where darkness is. So if somebody wants to kill you, you got to plead the blood of Jesus. And tell them, you're not going to do nothing in Jesus' name. God won't allow you to do nothing like that. Why are you even, What? what's your intentions and your motive? What did I do to you? Now, a lot of people died calling on the Lord and, 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 and getting robbed and shot and saying, in Jesus' name, don't do this. But it hits people heart, brothers and sisters. It'll hit, it'll hit people heart. If you doing it purely and sincerely, now, you're going to be scared. You might be a little nervous, but we don't have the spirit of fear. And we know walking out here, being bold, preaching the word. And these are the people who we want to reach the most. The killers, the rapists, the murderers. That's who we want to reach the most. The gangbangers, the drill rappers. I'm about to start doing videos specifically for them. I just want to do it the right way so they don't be too... Larry on, on walking with God. They see the truth, the goodness, and it make them want to change. I don't want to be not strong and firm when I rebuke the drill rappers. Not rebuke them. I'm going to do it out of love. I'm going to, you know. So, these murder drill rappers, they will kill you. So, we, we have to speak the word of God. And this is the same thing like you asked me in the question. What happens if you're in a situation when someone wants to kill you? Do you lie down or kill for your safety? You speak the word of God. You plead the blood of Jesus. You tell them peace is better than war. We all want to live so we can do the will of God. And it's God didn't make God. You're not a creator. So you don't know how it feels to create somebody. Who are you to take life from somebody? You can't even create a baby. God create the baby. You put sperm in a woman and according to God's grace, that baby will make it and be born and grow up. So that's you speak life over death when someone tries to kill you or they want to kill you. Somebody said, Drex, I'm glad you're bringing that script back. Who being in the very nature God did not consider it equality with God something to be used to his own advantage rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant yeah he even washed his humble he was so humble he washed his disciples feet he said whoever's the greatest among you will be your servant Matthew 23, 29. Said Matthew 23, 29. 
Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. That's what you wanted right there. Amen, Piper S. Jesus said, you must come in the name of the, if, of the Lord. Don't come in Jesus' name. It says baptizing them in the name of, in the, be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the Holy Ghost. But then it says, being baptized in the name Jesus. It tells us that. In the name of Jesus Christ, God is the Trinity. God comprises the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See, I don't see that in the scriptures where it say God is the Trinity. That's all I'm saying. I don't see it in the scriptures where it say God is the Trinity. God comprises the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You said can't read Brian Watson. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. So a lot of people can't read the scriptures with a a, a biblical mind frame because they they get caught up in thinking they reading something that was wrote yesterday. They don't. Their mind is not in biblical context, so they read things like, well. the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then they come up with things like the Trinity. We don't see that in the word. That's how you know they're not reading it the same way we reading it. You can't be reading it for yourself. You got a pastor teaching you this stuff. Somebody telling y'all, well, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost is the Trinity. But it don't say the word Trinity in the, in the, in the, in the word. What else did Jesus say? L-E-M. D dot Judah, what's wrong? We got some people in here that disagree, but they're not posting scriptures. They're just leaving comments. No humans has ever existed on this planet that suffered oppression as black people. Jacob seed, the bloodline pedigree of Israel. He who has heirs, let him hear. Now, the people in the scriptures that you could, that you say are Jacob seed, they did suffer oppression a lot, probably. But I wouldn't try to make it a black and white thing. Because you take away from a, all other people that's being oppressed. I wouldn't even make it a bloodline thing. I would make it. Good and evil. God and the devil you can't take a country that got rulers in the country that that's got pale faces and all of the people are black and just call them and say well they're oppressing us because our bloodline no they oppressing people because they evil they ain't got nothing to do with bloodline spirits Spirits are either unclean or clean. It ain't got nothing to do with what's your race or your bloodline. Because you got to look at it like this. When you look at Adolf Hitler, them people was oppressed. The people that Adolf Hitler did all that stuff to, he oppressed a lot of people. He didn't oppress black, who y'all say is black people. Didn't he oppress Germans or something like that? He was a, 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 a he was German. He was German himself, Nazi. And he was oppressing other Europeans. Yeah, God is one Lord, not three entities. Thank you, D. Dot Judah. I'm in agreement with you on that. 
Somebody said dot. In what way? You saying NS I hear, but it's still wrong. Trust me on this. I'm I'm gonna see what y'all talking about. Yo, I see you around the Poconos all the time. Haven't been in the Poconos in a long time, T-Raw, but I'm not too far from there. Um, Middletown, New York is like 30 minutes from me. Then Middletown goes into Monticello. So from Monticello, you go to the Poconos, it's probably about 30 minutes from there. But I've never, I'm never in the Poconos. I think I've been there a while ago. I caught, I was working maybe in, and um, I think Port, I can't remember if it was Port Jervis or something like that. And they brought me into PA. I mean, yeah, they brought me into Poconos. Sapphire Seas, hey, may peace be upon you. Noah, why don't you have a way to call in? A bar, that's a good question. I got to get a call in line. I got to see how to set that up. Let me write that down in my notes, actually. It just reminded me. Get a call in line. That'd be way better. It'll bring so much edification to the channel. Instead of me taking so long to read y'all comments, we can just bring y'all in and y'all can speak. Maybe they suffocated from the lack of oxygen at certain levels of the atmosphere. Uh, she was speaking about something probably I said earlier or maybe responding to one of y'all comments. Dora Lopez. The true Israelites are the saints. Romans chapter 9 verse 6 through 7. Isaac thy seed be called his referencing to the elect. Now. It never says that the Israelites are the saints. Golden, golden, golden. But it tells you saints are the the people of God, people who follow God's laws and commandments. That might be a whole nother teaching. Are the saints the Israelites? And then go find out how many times the word saints was mentioned in the scriptures and then give you context on that. So I put that down. I got a good feeling about this channel. Like we gonna start a Christian organization through making these videos. Something big is gonna come out of this. I can feel it. All glory be to God. Yes, when you see me, you see the father. Just like I'm obedient to my parents, you see me, you will also see them. Yeah, they always says that uh, we are a representation of our parents and we make our parents look bad when we act certain ways and do certain things. But everybody is, is not like their parents. You know how they say like father, like son? That's not true. You might have a father that's an alcoholic, but the son, he seen his father have a lot of negative reactions off of alcohol. So it drove him to not drink alcohol at all. You might have a a, a, a father who was a drug seller and been in and out in prison his son seen that and had to visit him in prison so he did everything he could do to not have to sell drugs 
He said, you like the red letters? You mean the red letters like this? All the red letters are Jesus Christ's words. They're the words of Jesus Christ himself. Or you mean like the red letters when I'm writing with the red pen? At first, what if you if you can if y'all can see when I first started writing this book, it wasn't all red. It's a lot of red writing in here. These are um all Bible verses about lying. Y'all know any liars? Screenshot this and read it to them. Give them a lesson why they shouldn't lie. Why God don't like lying. So I started off in red. A lot of this stuff is written in red. But some of it is not. See? This is black. When I first started off, I was more in the black in the back of the book. Well, these is more recent, but you can get D dot come to Christ. Butler, God created all men, not just black men. Yup. That's why you gotta broaden your heart, open your heart and your mind. They say narrow is the gay. The narrow is the way. Narrow is the gate that leads to life. But that don't mean be narrow when it comes to the word of God. You have to be open. Especially if you can't show what you saying in the scriptures, you don't see the word black or white for people in the scriptures. So to take something that God created and attach it to something that man created, that's a, um, that's a wicked imagination. This is why everybody wrong when they say he was white, he had blonde hair and blue eyes, or you say he was black. We don't know what he looked like. Well, it describes a, a, but that's not saying exactly who he was. It describes him. Somebody says, L-E-M, if you go to Christ, it's not going to help you. I don't know what that supposed to mean, D dot dot. I don't know how to trust the idea that people want to say God is water. It doesn't feel right. C D says Yeshua. Daniel Mercy's Lim. Yes, God made men, not Jesus, because Jesus was created. He was born. God, I mean, Jesus said he is the light and the truth. Amen. A God is not born, bro. All right. So y'all trying to say Jesus is not God. I'm just going to keep repeating to y'all the same scriptures to, to, to make y'all think. When he said, I and my father are one. He said. What else did he say? It's so many scriptures that prove that Jesus is God. I'm surprised that I don't got it written down on here. Matter of fact, I was going through it because we was going through Jesus as the Messiah. And I got sidetracked going through other scriptures. Let me see if I can find that page again. Because I didn't get finished reading the scriptures. Got to find it. Here we go. 
so we can answer some of y'all questions. Now we ended off in Malachi. Now we're going to go to John chapter 1, verse 49 through 51. No, we read that. So go to Luke chapter 2 and 11. Hold on, let me just find out Luke real quick. Here we go. Luke 2 and 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse five. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord and ourselves, your servants for Jesus sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness Hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So it says the gospel of Christ is the image of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world, lowercase g, false gods, the God of this world, the devil, he blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So the the gospel of Christ is the image of God. God is a spirit. Gospel of Christ is the image of God. Go to Acts chapter 15, verse 26. No, matter of fact, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some of you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain? And your faith is also vain. Yeah, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so, be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be ra not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept? For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, Afterward, they that are Christ's at his coming, then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed 
is death, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith, all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expect, accepted, not accepted, 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 which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son of then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. So it says, that God may be all in all. Only way you learn about God is through the law. Like not only way, but when it comes to the New Testament, the law of Christ is going to teach us about God and it's teach us how to be godly. And it says him and God is one. You can't take away from that scripture. I and my father are one. Why did Jesus look? Y'all want to play these games? Let me just say this one scripture from Revelation. Go to Revelation 22 and 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He said, I am the root and the offspring of David. He said he the root of David. David was Solomon father. Jesus saying he the root of David. Why do David call him Lord? See, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Now, he says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So we talking about Old Testament. We talking about before the Old Testament was created, Jesus was always around. The spirit. But he had to fulfill a lot of things that people that was that that, that was before him made heirs. He said, I'm the first and the last. Y'all saying God is not born. This is why he was able to speak so boldly saying on these two great commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. They said only person that can heal a blind person is if God be with them. Now we got a lot of comments. They're not posting no scriptures. They just come in with their opinion. God said, lean not on your own understanding. There's a way that seems right to man, but the ways thereof is the end and is death. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Matthew 18, 20, Brandon Hall. Hallelujah, brother. Amen. Jesus touched this man. I see you, Lord. So Christ being the spirit is God's son. John 1.1 1, 1 is a lie. I think this brother just wants some, some, some attention. He, he's saying a lot of things that he's not showing with, 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 with scriptures. He's just making claims. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So it's telling us the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was manifest. So it's telling you in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was God. So the word was God. That take you into a whole nother different 
uh, mind frame when you think about God. The word was God. Thank you, brother. Even, even when you try to disagree, it leaves me room to come and edify. I thank you, D. Judah. Just for saying John 1, 1 is a lie. I love you. I want to thank you. You gave me an opportunity to teach. Even more. Dot. He is the light. Please read John first chapter. You will see the word was with God and the word became flesh. That's what we just read. And th this is why Dot can say those comments. This is why he can say those comments is because in him was life. And the life was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. See. Remember, anybody that does righteousness come to the light so his deeds could be shown. But it tells us darkness came into the world and they couldn't comprehend it. Because their deeds was evil. Men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds was evil. That's the word. The Jewish men wrote the New Testament. Ain't no man write the New Testament, brother. It's telling us all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproofs, for rebukes, for instructions in righteousness, so that the man of God may be perfect and duly furnished unto all good works. So ain't no Jewish man write the Bible. You supposed to pray in private, brother. Now, Jesus said, when you pray, do it in secret, and your father who see you in secret will reward thee openly. He said, suddenly lay hands on no man, but he said, pray for one another. He says, pray for one another. Watch this. You're supposed to pray for believers. Is any, all right, I'm reading out of James chapter five, verses 13. James five and 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now watch this. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You see that? And it tell us Elias. They see, we got to do a lot of studying on these Elijah, Elias and all these people because it's mentioned so many times. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. So you saying we supposed to pray in private still, brother? After I just gave you all that, may peace be upon you. I just gave you wisdom. Golden says, John 1 and 10, King James Version he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. Thank you. I love you. Golden, golden. We got to bring that. We got to bring that. See, he said John was a lie. But look, look at all these revelations we getting out of John. He said John 1.1 1, 1 was a lie, right? That's what the brother said. Let's go to John 1.10. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, 
and his own received him not. So y'all talking about we black, we Hebrews lights. Jesus tried to go to his own people who y'all claim is black and they, Jesus black, they didn't receive him. So why would we still keep pushing that same ideology, rhetoric, thought, spirit? No, salvation is for everybody who calls upon the name of the Lord should be saved. Not just for Hebrew Israelites. You see John 1 and 10? I'm going to put my hand on it, y'all. Look a little bit up from my hand. My middle finger. Oh, let, let me not do that. Look up right there. See? The world was made by him. It's telling us the world was made by Jesus, brothers and sisters. Why you think he was able to tell the waves in the ocean to stop and they obeyed him? You got to have some connection with the creator or have the creator inside you to be able to do those things. Heal the sight of the blind. D. Dot said Jesus never created anything, but we showing and proving with scriptures. He created the world. Go to 1 John. No, not 1 John. Go to John 1 and 10. John 1 and 10. The world was made by him and the world knew him not. Remember, he says, I'm alpha and omega, the beginning of the end. And then John just confirms it. The world was made by him. Go to 1 John 1 and 10. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. The world was made by him. He said, I'm the beginning and the ending, Alpha and Omega. It might be another scripture where it say, before the world was formed, I was already or something like that. I, I just can't remember. It ain't coming to me exactly. Thanks, DDOT, for correcting me. I meant John 14, 6. Now you gave the right verse. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So you can't even make it to God but by Jesus Christ. And he's not God. You cannot make it to Jesus. You can't, you can't come unto the Father but by him. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. So he's telling them, I'm God. He said, from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. He's saying, I'm God. The spirit of God is living inside me. When, they, when John the Baptist baptized Jesus, they said, and lo, the spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. So, what are y'all talking about? Thank you, brother. Um, I mean, sister, or your brother, Daniel Mercedes, for that John 14, 16. I mean, John 14, 6. Because that goes right in and says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus tells him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. He said, from now on, you know him and you just seen him. God. Right? God. You should have known my father. Who is the father? God. And from henceforth, ye know him because you see me now and you just seen him by seeing me. Invest in the Bible. Pray before reading. Ask for wisdom to understand and then get back at me. God be with you. NS. Everything I'm doing is rightly dividing the word. I'm not leaving room for you to come up and say we black Hebrew Israelites. The word black ain't even in the Bible, brothers and sisters, not as a race or white. So how do y'all get these ideologies, these doctrines that y'all come up with? That's like the black Muslims. And everybody know that Elijah Muhammad and them wasn't real followers of Muhammad because they came and created their own version of Islam. Who told Elijah Muhammad to do that? If Muhammad was a prophet, why don't you follow the Quran? Why are you creating a whole nother doctrine in the name for your nation and all this stuff?
did Muhammad create nations and, and groups inside of Islam? Like how, you know, you see these dudes do? Genesis 1 and 1, D-Dot coming with it. Hold on. Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. Jesus said, I'm the beginning and the ending, though. I'm Alpha and Omega. So Jesus has something to do with this, too. See, once you learn how to read the scriptures with a Christ like mind, it's going to be it's going to be so joyful and like peaceful. You'll be at peace. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said, let there be light. And there was light. Remember, Jesus said, I'm the light. He said, shine your light. He said, we are the light of the world. Shine our light where it's darkness. But, and God said, let there be light. And it was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So, Jesus tells you, he, he, anyone walk in light, have fellowship with me. The first day, God said, let there be light. God saw the light. It was good. And God divided the light from darkness. Now, God said, the third day, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Name one person in the Old Testament that you've seen. Well, it was some of them that prayed to God and God did do things, but you didn't see nobody control the ocean like Jesus did. Somebody, they was doing certain things. God would give warning and then turn certain lands to water the blood and stuff like that. Make it rain, make it not rain. Certain people would pray to God and that things like that would happen. But you ain't never seen nobody do what how Jesus did. Moses did part the Red Sea. But. Moses was. Moses was given instructions. Jesus instructions was to fulfill everything that they did in the Old Testament and bring the new way of life, the New Testament, the testimony of the lamb. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light, said Nehemiah 9, 6. Jesus is king. Amen. Vlogs by Lucy. He's the king of all kings. Nehemiah, Nehemiah 9 and 6 says, Thou, even thou, art Lord alone. Thou hast made heaven. The heaven of heavens with all their hosts, the earth and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein. And thou preservest them all and the hosts of heaven worship, worshipeth thee. Who's the host of heaven, brothers and sisters? Jesus Christ. They talking about Jesus prophesying in Nehemiah chapter nine, verse six. But you was trying to prove me wrong and you just proved me right. Thank you, brother. I love you. <laughs> I'm going to edify y'all every time you try to do something that you think I'm not rightly. Or I'm missing. I'm not right. I'm going to show you what I'm saying. Show me faith without works. I'll show you my faith by my works. God is the king, bro, not Jesus. So Jesus, not the king of all kings, huh? You just going to keep going back and forth. I'm about to start just going, trying to skim on and get to a, a lot of more comments because I know we like way far back in the comments. I got to get caught up. D dot. That what you say, I trust the Jewish men that know him personally. Amen. J Diaz. Amen. Drek says. Matthew chapter six, verse 15. 
But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Cutie Blues. Hey, may peace be upon you. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. Amen, Alan. Arwan, you teaching. Yes, bring the scriptures. We doing this together, right? Queen Caitlin, may peace be upon you. Tez, may peace be upon you. We should pray for each other. Yes, that's what it tells us in the word, J. Diaz. Cutie Blues, can you say hi for me? I really want to hear your voice talking to me. Alan, that's right. L.E.M., everything was created through him and for him. J. Diaz said he was hostage. The devil had him bound. And Jesus loosed them. If, uh, if that's what I'm reading. D dot. Jesus got you too, bro. D dot just. He's just. He's so caught up with this. God made everything himself. Like Jesus ain't never built a synagogue on his own. He didn't build a, a synagogue in Jerusalem. God made that too, right? Jesus, when he died and rose from the dead, he confirmed that he was God. He raised people back from the dead. You ain't never seen that in the Old Testament. Ain't nobody brought nobody back to life in the Old Testament. He had to do these miracle signs and wonders to show that he was truly God walking amongst mortal men. He was God in the flesh. God came down from heaven in the likeness of his son, Jesus Christ, and showed us all of the power that God has through Jesus Christ. Bucks 55. He said, so a gang has been stalking you for no reason. Well, gang stalking is dealing with targeted individuals. So you have people that you might speak out against the Freemasons or fraternity. And a lot of these communities and countries are ran by sororities and fraternities. So if you speak out and they feel like they can penalize you or take you out or do something to you, they might try. But if you got spirit of discernment and you know how to read things in the spirit and fight in the spirit, it's going to be hard for them. They Every time they try, they're going to bring one of their own people down and they're going to bring more evidence and documentation to reveal the conspiracy that they have against you. So, yeah, gang stalking is not just a gang like a street gang. You got a bunch of people that come. To, now, some of these people are in street gangs like Bloods and Crips. But a lot of them work regular jobs like nurses, doctors, lawyers, judges, attorneys, stuff like that. Nurses. Because what do all these people got in common? They all go to college to get these jobs. Nurses, doctors, lawyers, attorneys, they all got to go to college to get a degree. When they go to college, they join the sorority. When they join the sorority, they come back into the world and attack people that's not in sorority, who's, who they think is a threat to their sorority. Jesus Christ is a threat to their sorority. His, the word of God is a threat to their sorority. So if you live and preach the word of God, you could be a threat to their sorority. I'm not talking about them pastors that only go to church on Sunday. I'm talking about every day, church every day. They was in the temple daily in the book of Acts. It said, my father worked either too and I do too. They said he healed the man on the Sabbath. It's not lawful. So the, 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 the um, Pharisees was stalking Jesus all throughout the scriptures. He couldn't go nowhere. Well, he wasn't being gang stalked, but he was being monitoring because he was the Messiah. He had to do all these miracles and healings for people so they had to um monitor him and follow him like that so he could fulfill prophecy
gospel coming. Robbie Do, you're back. Yeah, we back again. So do you think that in the kingdom of heaven, we will default back to the no grace meaning? If found guilty of breaking the law, the perpetrators will be deleted. Now, let me see. Let me dissect this. So do you think that in the kingdom of heaven, we will be, we will default back to the no grace meaning if found guilty of breaking the law, the perpetrators will be deleted. It's all about your faith, your works, and your heart. And God knows all of that. God knows all your works. He knows your faith, how strong it is, if you have any or little or none. And he knows where your heart is at. So that's why God will judge you on judgment day. I can't really answer that question. I could say, Search the scriptures. Yeah, um, let me, let me I'm gonna give you an answer. I, I just I know that when it says God will judge people on judgment day, and he talks about the type of people who do certain things, whoremongers, adulterers, fornicators, liars. God will judge all of these people. So no one knows only God and, and the person when they meet him that day. So I don't want to give you the wrong answer and mislead you, brother. Nobody can come to the father if it's not through me. That's what I'm saying. How y'all going to try to say Jesus is not God, but he's telling you can't even get to the father unless through him. That's like telling me I don't have no connection with Puerto Rico and I'm the only boat y'all can take from the United States to get to Puerto Rico. And you telling me I'm not connected with Puerto Rico. That sounds crazy. Jesus told us that he's alive through the angels, bro. Yeah, he said he's going to give us our spirit. He was going to give us his spirit. When he died on the cross, that's when his spirit came to all his followers when he died on the cross blood and water came out and that's the blood that you'll hear people say I plead the blood of Christ or we're healed by the blood the testimony of the blood of the lamb That's how you overcome the devil, the testimony of the blood of the lamb. So the Old Testament is a light. We need the Old Testament to, to guide us where we need to go, our footsteps. That's the light. Righteous man's steps, uh, man steps are ordered by the Lord. So we need the light. But we can't use the light without the, the testament of the blood, the New Testament. The testimony of the blood, and that's the New Testament. The testimony of the blood of the Lamb, that's the New Testament. So we need the light, and we need the testimony. Light is the law. The New Testament is the testimony of the Lamb. Jesus is King, Psalm 22. Jesus said, touch me, touch me. Yeah, Thomas said... My Lord and my God, when Jesus, when Thomas touched Jesus on his side, he replied, my Lord and my God. They thought he was a spirit when he came back from the, when he rose from the um, dead. He said, I'm not a spirit. A spirit don't have flesh. He said, touch me, handle me. They were scared. Can you say hi, Isaac? 
Hey, what's up, Isaac? May peace be upon you, Isaac. In Jesus' name, hopefully you have a better, more closer and clearer relationship with the Father. And you can read his word with no distractions and see the, the goodness and the beautiness that he left for all of us. It's not just for the Hebrew Israelites. It's not just for the Jews. It's for all that believe. He promised us some spiritual gifts that can't no man take from you. What God blessed, no man can curse. Um, the the brother D dot Judah, he says, bro, Jesus is not God, Lord or Savior, bro. So now he just in here trying to get a reaction. I won't read all your comments because I see what you are doing is you you're, now you're posting scriptures. All right, I'm gonna read some of your comments. Dot, bro, God spoke the word. The word was Jesus, and through him things were created. He don't understand that. Dot got a speech impediment when it comes to the when it come to the scriptures, brothers and sisters. But we still gonna help him out. We gonna long suffer with him. Cause I love y'all. I love you, Dot. And I'm gonna help you. I wanna help you, brother. You don't owe me nothing. I don't take tithes and offerings. I don't got no cash app. I'm a preacher that you ain't gotta hate because I don't got no collection plate. Now, let me give you wisdom, Doc. You said go to Luke 4 and 8. I'm going to follow you. Hold on. You said go to Luke 4 and 8. We're going to follow you. Hold on. Luke 4 and 8. Look, you're trying to prove me wrong, or you're trying to prove the word of God wrong. But what you're going to do is get edified again. Watch this. Luke 4 and 8, y'all. He said... Why you think Jesus said this, Luke 4, 8? So we read Luke 4, 8, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. So he's saying he's going to worship the Lord thy God. And it tells you, if anybody worship God, they must worship him in truth and spirit. So I'm teaching you again. Yeah, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. It is written. Now watch this. I'm going to give you more than what you gave me. You gave me Luke 4 and 8. I'm going to give you Luke 4 and 4 and Luke 4 and 8 and break it all down to you, brother, because I love you. Watch this. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. So God is a spirit, and those who must worship him must worship him in truth and spirit. Now watch this. Luke 4 and 4. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Every word of God. So, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. All this stuff we read from John to Genesis, you're, you're teaching yourself, brother. You are intelligent. You are wise. You a child of God, brother. You teaching me. You teaching everybody. Thank you, brother. Matthew Matthew 19. He going to teach us some more, y'all. Matthew 19, 16, and 17. Let's follow. Matthew 19, 16, and 17. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So he said, there's none good. Why are you calling me good? They called him good master, right? He said, there's none good but one, that's God. And it tells you that with God, I mean with man, all things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. It said one plant, one water, God give the increase. So man has to do the will of God to let God be shown. Remember, we keep saying God is a spirit. And the word, going back into Genesis, God is a spirit, right? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 
all spirit. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. See, God said, let there be light. All spirit. Now, when we go into John, what do it say? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Those who must worship God must worship him in truth and spirit. God is a spirit. The same was in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Oh, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus said that in the book of Revelations. He's God, brothers and sisters. How many times we got to prove it? Thank you, brother, because you're just showing me more different ways how to prove Jesus is God. I love you, brother. Thank you. Because I wouldn't have been able to do this on my own. This is why it tells us to exhort one another and edify one another. And that's what you're doing right now. Even trying to prove that Jesus is not God. You're proving he is. <laughs> wow. D. Dot Colossians 1 and 16. For by him were all things created. See? And we keep telling y'all. He created the world and the world knew him not. We giving it to you. It's God's word and God can't be a liar. Colossians 1 and 16. Let's go there. Let's go there. Colossians 1 and 16 says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Amen. I love you, brother or sister. Golden, golden. You have the mind of Christ inside you. I could tell the Holy Spirit God in you. So, what, what, where are we going now, brother D Dot? We're showing and proving. Oh, let me let's let's read more because this is so edifying. You told me to read Colossians one and sixteen. I'm gonna read Colossians one and sixteen, and then we're gonna read to eighteen. So Colossians one. And 16 through 18 chapter 1 verse 16 through 18 for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him and he is before all things he is before all things I'm Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end and by him all things consist and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father. So they're not talking about God the Father. They're talking about Jesus this whole time. For it pleased the Father that in him, talking about Jesus, should all fullness dwell. I love you all. Now let's continue. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, testimony of the blood of the Lamb, right? And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. You learn so much. Praise Yahweh forever in Jesus Christ's name forever. Amen. Yes. Where are you right now? Pressure and Prince. I'm in my car making a video. What do you mean? I'm in New York. You won't catch me partying with Diddy. I ain't TD Jakes. I'm in upstate New York. And we cooking right now. Yeah, we are. We are, um. We going to work right now. We cooking like we cooking like it's Thanksgiving and we cooking for a whole a bunch of people coming together about the we about to feed the poor. That's what we doing right now. We cooking up real strong meat. Remember, milk is for babes, them who are babes in Christ, but strong meat is for grown grown-ups, people who's men and women. So, we cooking up strong meat. D 
D-Dot come again, but he ain't got the scripture posted up. He said, Jesus said, I'm not the great one. It's God. He told you right there in the context of the verse. You trying to take one verse, but every other verse you just gave us, we just proved that Jesus is God. So you you digging yourself deep, brother. Give us chapter and verse. We'll, we'll, we'll walk you through this too. Give us chapter and verse where he said that. Come on. Scan that QR code. What code you talking about, brother? I don't know what he talking about. He's at a gas station. If you think he is for swift, swipe. Yeah. Isaiah 45, verse 5 through 22. Isaiah 45, verse 5. I don't give Isaiah 45, verse 5 and 22. All right, let me get that. Isaiah chapter 5. 45. Verse 5 and 22. So we go to verse 5. It says, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. So when he say there is no God beside him, he meaning his law and his words. If someone come, why would they call these men prophets of God? And then they would say, um, some of these people follow strange gods and false gods. So, yeah, he's telling you the God, he's, he's God. Isaiah 45 and 5, he says, I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Now go a few chapters up. Watch this. Let's go to Isaiah 45 and 2 and bring more edification, make it more clear. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces. Now, who's going to do this? I will break in pieces the gates of brass. He's going to use vessels. He's going to use people with flesh to do this and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Now, a lot of this stuff he will do through the spirit. But, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name and the God of Israel. So he's letting you know his law. He would, he's going to, this is the things that he's going to do because it's a lot of crooked places. He's going to make them straight. He talking about y'all Israelites. They was following idols. He's re God rebuking the Israelites all throughout the old Testament, giving them laws and stuff like that. And then he telling you, he going to send Jesus and he going to do the will of, of his will, meaning God's will. He going to follow the law. He going to keep the law. See, for Jacob, my servant's sake and Israel, mine elect, I have even calling thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, Jesus Christ, surname. Though thou hast not known me. Now, not this. that's not talking about Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. He's talking to Israelites in Israel. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. They're saying this: the, the Lord's anointed. So that's who he's talking to. When they were following idols of wood and all that stuff, their heart was deceived. You read about all this stuff in Isaiah. So he's telling them to walk Stop worshiping idols. No other God. He says it again in 44. Failure to worship the Lord. He's telling them, I am the Lord in 43 and 8. All in Isaiah. So he's talking about his judgment. And then it, and let's, let's go back to bring more context. Isaiah 41 and 21. God challenges the heathen gods. So he was 
making a distinction and a separation saying you have other gods that people are following but i am the lord and there's none else and there's no god besides me they were lowercase g's i girded thee though thou hast not known me they was following other gods they haven't known the true and living god capital g they was following pharaoh i'm breaking it down for you and then you said isaiah 45 and 22. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. Just reconfirming, spirit, God is a spirit. Those who must worship him must worship him in truth and spirit. Look unto me, and be ye saved. You think that was, look, this was written at a time for the Israelites, but these prophecies became true for everybody. That's the beautiful thing about this, if you know how to read it right. Salvation was given of, unto the Jews, but there's a time that came that it was given to all nations, to the Gentiles. So you gotta learn how to, you gotta know how to read it, and it, you'll be able to explain it and teach it like how I am. You said read that good, bro. I read it. I read it a lot. I don't know if you're talking about a different chapter, but I read what you just quoted. Thank you, J. Diaz. Judah is wrong. He just read it for you, Judah. Everybody telling you, bro, you got a misinterpretation. You, you're not getting these scriptures in the right context. You seeing it literally as what it say. You got to take it spiritually. That's why I keep saying God is a spirit. You making it look like God is some man that live in the sky, that he's physical, and, and, and that's not it. And Jesus is just his son. No. Jesus. It says we all children of God. So if Jesus be his son, what's the difference between a son and the children? Jesus is God, bro. It would. I'm trying to explain this to you just real simple. And they and Jesus, when he called himself the son of God, they said, you blasphemy because you're making yourself equal with God. He said, in your law, don't it say that ye are gods? So how am I blasphemy if I say I'm the son of God? He just told them what that mean. Ye are gods. It wasn't a capital G meaning y'all all gods like a, the creator. Yo, ye are gods made in the image and likeness. That's why he came on and brought more teachings on that in the New Testament. It don't say made in the likeness and image of God in, in the Old Testament, do it? April Bay, when he said, why did he say, God, why have you forsaken me? He talking about the laws. He's in the spirit. He talking about the law, the law of God. He wanted everything to be done lawfully. What they did wasn't lawfully. They murdered him and he was innocent. So he was speaking about the laws of God and the righteousness, the spirit. He knew he's that's why he said right after that. But if 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 but if it be thy will, let it be done right after that. He said that he said, but nevertheless, not my will. But if it be thy will be done, let this let this cup pass from me. See, you got to read whole scripture when you say little quotes. Smelling critters. What's up? D dot is in the Old Testament. Jesus came to save you too, D dot. Yeah, he must be a Hebrew Israelite. He probably got the fringes on and everything. So I just want to let them know, man, Jesus is, is you don't have to learn all that stuff they teaching you. They teach y'all how to teach like that and learn them words. The Bible don't teach y'all that. The Bible don't say Hamashiach. It don't say Ruach Hakudesh. It don't say all the stuff that y'all are saying. It tells us interpretations in certain words. But if we wanted to learn Greek or Hebrew, we'd just go by the Bible in Hebrew or Greek. Y'all not teaching us the Bible from a, y'all not teaching us, y'all trying to use an English Bible 
and say these words mean this in Hebrew. Why not just go grab the Hebrew Bible if y'all want to teach Hebrew? That's my concern. Y'all will write one thing in Hebrew and say, you know, his name is Yahshua. And the commandments that he gave when he said this, did y'all write everything else in English, but you say his name in Hebrew. Write everything in Hebrew so I could just translate it. If not, you doing your you claim to be Hebrew, but you're doing your own culture a disservice by not knowing it and teaching it. Drex, Luke 3 and 22, and the Holy Ghost descended into a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, thou art my beloved son, and thee I am well pleased. See, voice came from heaven. What about when they were standing on the mountain and they said two spirits came down from heaven and stood right next to Jesus. One was Moses and one was the prophet Elias. And then the disciples ran up and said, this is good. Let us make three tabernacles. I have to wonder why I don't something like you guys have been in my world for so long. I don't know why you guys keep doing Teo and I don't know what that means, but Jaquil George, you got to try to write that comment better. Robert O'Neill, he sees the truth. He says facts. So what D. Dot Judah is doing, he's leaving more room to teach, but he's starting to be like, he's just starting to try to go against everything in scriptures. And then he'll th throw out a few scriptures to say, well, this is why it is. He's confused and he don't want to read the word of God himself and learn and pray and ask God for wisdom. Because God is a spirit. So the reason why you don't see the word and the truth of God's word, like all of us see it and agree, is because you have a spirit of slumber. Remember, God said they unstable and unlearned. They rest at certain scriptures like they do all the other scriptures. So he said God would give them a strong delusion so they would believe a lie. So God is a spirit. God put a different spirit in you so you can't see the truth in his word right now because you have a rebellious spirit. I was like this at one time. My cousin would try to talk to me. He's no longer here. He used to try to talk to me about the word of God. And I will always make a joke, make a mockery. I wouldn't know as much scriptures as you know, but I would just ask questions and be ignorant and not reading for myself. I wasn't into the word. I would just like, if you know so much about God and you're trying to teach me about God, I was, I had that spirit in me. So that's how I know that it's a spirit that, it's a rebellious spirit. And Lim says, Amen. L-E-M. Golden Golden says, Golden Golden says, D-Dot, Judah, Colossian, 1 through 16 through 20, and Hebrews 1 through 8, and John 1 through 10. And then he says, watch this, Matthew 7, verse 21 through 23. So we're going to go through it. We've been here four hours. I didn't drink nothing this whole time, y'all. Oh, I do got a little bit of little Fiji left. I'm lying. I'm sorry. I drunk a little bit of this Fiji. I'm not thirsty, though. I never get thirsty. I'm one of the type of ones that can eat a whole full course meal and not drink nothing at all. I never really drink. I drink a lot sometimes when I eat, but I, I, I always grew up like that. Never having to drink is always eating without drinking. So Hebrews 1 and 16 through 20. The more and more you get familiar with the word of God, 
that this going to start feeling like the Bible getting shorter and smaller, especially the New Testament. You be flipping through them pages like, oh, I know where this is at. When you first get familiar, it take you a while. You flipping through it like a regular book. Hebrews 1 and 16 through 20. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 16 through 20. I don't see that, bro. Let's go into Hebrews 1 and 8. Oh, no, that's Colossians 1, 16 and 20. That's why. Hebrews 1 and 8. I'm sorry. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A sceptre of righteousness is the sceptre of thy kingdom. See? But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Now, why would the angels tell Jesus this? Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. Jesus said, I'm the beginning and the end. Who they talking about? Jesus said, I and my father are one. See, you got to really just see the scriptures for what it says and not get, have your feelings and your emotions all wrapped up in it. Let's go into John 1 and 10. It says, fools hate instruction. They despise knowledge and wisdom. John 1 and 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. See? He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. What does it say after that? He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. This speaks in volumes right here. The only begotten of the father, out of Isaiah, out of Moses? You mean to tell me out of Nehemiah? Out of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? The only begotten of the Father? Wow. Out of Solomon too? Let's go on to Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 through 20. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is a before all things and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Somebody said only the black people are the saints, right? Here we go in 1 Colossians chapter 26. God ain't say that in 1 Colossians chapter 26. It say, even the mystery, which hath been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. 
to whom God would made known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. See? Y'all say we can't be perfect? Watch this. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Y'all saying y'all can't be perfect. We all make mistakes. That ain't what the word of God say. I'm showing you. I'm showing y'all other than what y'all believe. That's the devil that made that deception. That's a whole different doctrine. We all make mistakes. Ain't nobody perfect. That's why I got this teaching coming soon. D dot, you got to quote scriptures every time you say you disagreeing. You can't lean on your own understanding. Because it helps go back and look up them scriptures and show you why you might not see it the way how it's, it's written spiritually. He, he, he gonna agree with one. So he's not all the way like rebellious, stiff neck, hard and heart. He is accepting some of it. He's saying Colossians is correct, but other two is wrong. Maybe you don't like the interpretation, how we explain it, the other two, and it's convicting you, hitting you hard. So you're like, oh, I don't wanna hear that, that's wrong. Like a woman preacher, it say it plain as day. I suffer a woman not to teach in the church. She going to cheat a woman that's preaching. Oh, that's wrong. That was only meant for that time for the people. And during that time, it don't say that. That's what you doing right now, brother. You in denial. Trader grave says, amen. My boy is reading from the Bible quoting. You haven't said anything worth quoting. See? He's trying to say Jesus is nothing to God, bro. So if Jesus is the only way to make it to the father, but he's nothing to God, right? There's no other name that has more power on earth, but Jesus Christ. He called him my only begotten son, but he's nothing to God, right? You proving that we, what we are teaching is, 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 is sound doctrine. And you're convinced because everything you saying, we go right into the scriptures and prove it. Spirit is moving. Always Robert O'Neill. New sub trader grave. Thank you. I appreciate you. Beastie Westy new just sub. Thank you. all I appreciate y'all. May peace be upon y'all in Jesus name. NS says, dude, the father is Jehovah, the omnipotent. The son is Jesus, whom Jehovah gave the earth. So man will no longer have to live under the law, which came by sacrifice. Jesus sent comforter slash Holy Spirit. So is that what they teach at the Jehovah's Witness building? Or show me chapter and verse that says that, that Jesus didn't say, I and my father are one. Now, I'm not going to disagree with you. They do say Jesus, the son of God. But people call Jesus God. Thomas touched Jesus on his side. He replied, my Lord and my God. Th Come on. How many times was Jesus called God by other people in the scriptures? Who's this? Opal Cartel community outreach Jesus is nothing you, you not you don't have no scriptures to back up that that's your own opinion so when man lean on his own opinion and his own understanding this is what God said about that God said trust not in your own ways he says trust in the Lord in all our ways and he will direct our paths it says a righteous man's steps are ordered by the Lord it tells you Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It said, there's a way that seemed right to a man, but the ways thereof is the ways of death. Even in laughter, 
the heart is sorrowful. But yes, Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that. Not Muhammad, not Buddha, not the Hindus, not Yoga, not Farrakhan, not Aleister Crowley, not the Freemasons, not the Pope. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. D Dot said, I'm glad we talking about this. Hopefully you take this video and teach some of your family or some people that you really love because you came in here with everything which you disagree with. So maybe you wanna bring this back to someone in your family that you know is a church person so you can show them things that you learn because this is probably the stuff that they taught you. So what you telling me what you believe because this is what your family taught you. You might got family in church, pastors and all that stuff. And you you believe this stuff because your family is you you got a they got a church, you see them really preaching, and you think it's like what they're doing is biblical, but I'm showing you what God's words say. They might not went deeper into these teachings like how we going. Yes, baby. Thank you, A Bar. King of kings means he is the king over kings of other nations. Lord over all lords of other nations. That's what that means. So he's Solomon's king. He's David's king. He's Abraham's king. This is why David called him Lord. Everything I'm saying, scriptures confirming, Holy Ghost proving and confirming anything we saying. This is why David called him Lord. This is why I say king of the king of the Jews, king of all kings, and the highest name on earth. No other higher name than his. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess at the name of Jesus Christ. And this ain't nothing that you do secretly. The only rit rituals a Christian do is baptism and communion. We don't have rituals. Like some of these other people do to get knowledge. They make these people go pay thousands of dollars just to get the stuff that they corrupted in the word of God and mixed it in your um, fraternity or sorority. They made you feel like it was found on Christian principles, but they twist the word of God and mock the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is where a lot of them spirits come out like the dude D dot. The dude D dot, he got the spirit of one of them dudes that came out of the Freemasons and they taught him to study in archons and you believing in different gods and stuff. They got the God of medicine and all this different stuff. So you come over here and you hear that Jesus Christ is God. It don't sit right with you. You done paid thousands of dollars to get all this information through the Freemasons or whatever fraternity, Alpha Kappa sorority. And then they telling you the God of medicine. And we over here teaching Jesus Christ was doing all these miracles healing people. You ain't learned that in your fraternity. So you want to fight me with everything you know, with what you think you know. But we going to hit you with the word of God. And it says it's going to divide your soul and your spirit asunder. If you go in Jesus name saying he's God, Lord or Savior, you're to hell. No, brother, that's a wrong. That's a lie, brother. Cat Williams taught you that these brothers like Cat Williams believe in the Anunnaki's. He talking about this time piece I got on. It's a cap. It's a it's a compass time. It's a time compass or whatever he's saying. His his medallion on his necklace and his watch, the name of his brand, Woke Folk or Folk Woke or whatever that is, it's a compass. The Masons use square and compass. That's their that's their tools. That's their logos. Cat William talking about the Anunnaki's. That's fallen angels. That's false gods. Which one of them angels did you hear about after the flood when Noah? saved his family did anybody else make it so they wasn't no angels of god 
the Anunnaki's and all this stuff. But that's where these spirits come from sometimes. That the not I'm not saying that that's specifically you, D dot, but I'm saying unclean spirits. They come from many different places like that. This is why the Bible speaks against divination, witches, uh, observer of times. He said y'all can observe the the the, uh, the stars and in, in the sky and all that, but you can't tell the signs of the times. You said family, please help. I ran out of gas with my daughter hours ago. I contacted family and police. I walked to get help at a gas station. No luck. Unfortunately, can someone please help us get gas, please? John Dalton, where you at? Email me. Or put your email in the comment section or email me. But don't put at gmail.com. Just type at. Like, type at, A-T, because I don't want it to not put the comment up. If you put an email address, sometimes it'll put it on review. I don't know how it works with email addresses, but spell it like you type in everything. Now, you can write the dot and then the com, but don't put the at symbol, because if it, if it, if the, the, the chat detects it as a email, it might hold it for review. You probably don't have an email. Just email me. You on a cell phone though, so you can email me. Matthew twenty three twenty nine. Listen real good. I hope you don't. I hope you don't claim to be a Hebrew Israelite, D. Dot Judah, and you let me find out you cutting your beard. And it says, don't shave the corner of your beards in Leviticus. You ain't keeping all the law. But let me continue, brothers and sisters. I don't want to lose y'all while y'all in here. I'm sorry. Let's continue. He's saying Matthew 23, 29. Just read real good. He's saying, just listen real good. Let's see what it's talking about. Matthew 23, 39, excuse me. Matthew 23, 39 says that. Oh, yeah, it's talking about Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent to thee. When, when, uh, they they was uh you know Jesus said this same thing when he said go tell that fox I cast out devils and do cures today tomorrow and the third day I must be perfected and he said it must has as it is written said he quoted uh the same thing but I don't this ain't in there this is they see they quote things a lot of times brothers and sisters he said he said for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and coming so tithe was mint you know like mints you you you, you can eat a mint a breath mint anise anise is sound like a herb and come and sound like a herb that grew from the ground. It has to be. And I think these things are in our grocery stores and have omitted the weightier matters of law, of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. He called them blind guides which string at a net and swallow a camel. He said, you make clean the outside of the cup, but within are full of extortion. Then he give them teachings on this, said, man, it ain't no, it ain't no sin to eat with unwashing hands. He said, don't, 
He said, beware the leaving of the Pharisees. He said, they don't eat. He said, they keep the traditions, all the Jews, not just the Pharisees. He said, all the Jews, they keep the traditions of the elders. They don't eat unless they wash their hands and other such things they do. He said, but don't be like unto them because they don't keep the commandments of God. He was saying they too self-righteous. They want to be called rabbi in the markets. They got these big old jackets on, the suits. They love popping the broaders on they, enlarging the broaders. He was going crazy on them. And Jesus was rebuking them like, like sharply, the same way how I be doing when I'm rebuking people. Ludacris running around talking about, look at Jesus' peace on my necklace. That's not Jesus Christ on your necklace, fool. Jesus Christ is God, CK, S6, South 6. That's true, brother. And we've been proving and confirming that this whole live. Okay, so D-Dot, you keep every law? John Dalton, I swear to God, I'm serious right now. Family, please help. Now, I want to see... If you want a phone, you can show your face. We can video chat. That's why I said email me. I don't know if you telling the truth. All these people start sending you cash apps and stuff and you lying. I don't even ask people for nothing. So I don't like, if you need help, I'll help you. But I'm not going to just cash app you. What you need, $5? $10? Y'all want to cash app them? That's up to y'all if it's on y'all heart. But I wanted to test the spirit to see whether or not it's of God. The Bible say, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit to see whether or not of God. I didn't see him post too many comments. I just seen him come in and say, I need help. He see all these people in here and saying, I need help. It, it's like them. I got people on my Instagram that text me and say, they family poor, they want help. But I don't know whether to believe it or not. You out here in the other country and you can't work at all, but you got Instagram and you could keep getting on here texting me. You can't think of nothing how to make a, a, a survive and make a living. And you saying if I help you, it'll, it'll, it'll really help you a lot. Just one time. That's it. It just don't be sounding right. You're not even saying what, how much you need or nothing. Just help me. And then you kind of like brush one of them off and then another one come. And they look all the same. It's like, y'all a bunch of African scammers. That's what the spirit is trying to tell me. But I want to, I, I don't want to send them something and then they get my cash app shut down or something like that. You got all these hacking and stuff going on now. I'm real, I don't just be quick to believe everything. It's because you say you a Christian and you in my chat, man. We got to talk, brother. I ain't see no comments with you. He ain't leave no comments, brothers and sisters. Let me take this, pin this, unpin this. You just came in here asking for help. Yeah, that's not the spirit of God. If you don't work, you don't eat. Don't be lazy. Why you break down with no gas anyway? Who do you? It don't even make no sense. You came in here just to say that one comment. It's like a scam, bro. Putting all these praying hot signs and all that stuff. Family, please. I tried to call the police. So the police can't help you. Contacted family and police. Now you're going to say you with your daughter and all that. So you might be in here lying and all that. Face at me after this live. I want to see you and your daughter in the car broke down. And I'm going to cash at you $20 or whatever. $40, whatever. Because people be just making up anything nowadays, y'all. We on social media, you can't believe everything somebody say, especially if it ain't, we ain't, he ain't come in here and say no scriptures. He wasn't saying amen. He didn't come in here. He's coming in here like a wolf. You were a wolf in sheep clothing. The Lord rebuked thee in Jesus name. But if it's coming, if you are truly, I'm sorry, if, if you come in here truly as a humble person that's really need help, then I want I want you to show proof.
He said, I swear to God. Now this, look, y'all, don't help him. He just said, I swear to God. Do not help him. Nobody send him nothing. If you send him something, cancel it right now. He just said, I swear to God. Don't, don't send this man nothing. Give me that chapter and verse where it says, swear not at all. Neither by earth, because it is God's. No, neither by heaven, because it is God's throne. Neither by earth, because it is footstool. Neither by New Jerusalem, because it is the city of the great king. They use Jesus' name as a curse word in movies because their power in his name. They use Jesus' name to get donations, too. Family, $9 will get us home, please. If everybody send you $9, that might be 9000 at the time this video will go off. You trying to get a, a, a blessing. Through my through what I'm through the work that we that God is using me to, to, to bring souls over to his kingdom. You talking about money. They say be not greedy for filthy lucre. So you don't see nobody near the gas station that you could get ten dollars from. This just don't make sense. You got all this time and charge on your phone to talk in the live chat that you how did you find this chat to come in here and ask for nine dollars? It don't make sense, brothers and sisters. It sounds suspicious. That sound like John Dalton was just on another stream asking for money, Caitlin said. I don't know what's going on, but these dudes, they could be trying to get the uh, the viewers to 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 financially support them in their lying. Like people that make GoFundMe's and oh, I, I, my um, daughter just died or whatever. They ain't show a fake picture of this little girl. They ain't got no proof. You can't see three people right now at the gas station and say, can I have $3? You don't steal, you don't lie, you don't look at women wrong, you don't overeat. Yeah, I don't do none of that. It's no reason. Whatever God is gonna give you, he gonna give you. So some days, sometimes you might have to struggle and be without. You might be broke some days. You might have $2,000 saved or 20,000 and then you might be down there. 200 or 2000 or whatever and gotta give it to you here take it here bring it back here put people in your life take them out so long as you keep his law and his commandment though he'll he'll protect you spiritually and make you at peace so you could think clear and see clear give him glory and he'll give it back to you I believe conviction is what allows you to know what is the truth. John, John Huack, yeah, that's true. A bar says, do you have a white woman at home? It seems you want to save the nations that oppress the Israelites, us. Okay, let's answer that. If I told you it says, whether Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, ye are all one in Christ Jesus, that's telling you that it don't matter about what nation you from. If you have faith and trust in Christ Jesus, it's about everybody being one spirit of the same spirit. Now, when you start talking about nations and countries and waving flags, that's pride. If 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 Gaza and Israel believe in one spirit, it wouldn't be all that stuff right now. Why is it war? 
because it's two different good spirits. One of them believe in Muhammad. One of them believe in the God of the Bible. That's not racism. That ain't got nothing to do with who's oppressing who. It's their beliefs. Muslims believe it's okay for certain things. Christians don't. We won't get along. We won't want to be around each other too long because you believe stealing is justified. I believe stealing is a sin and God killed people for stealing. Lying too. But I want to get back directly to your question because it seemed like I'm dancing around. You says, you said, do you have a white woman at home? No, I love all people. It's I, I love everybody. Even I hate even the ones who have the sin in them that I hate the sins that's in them. I love them, too, but I love all people more. I love more people. I love the people who's as of God, that got the spirit of God, that do righteousness. But it seems like you want to save nations that oppress the Israelites. So who, what I, would what, what I say about Haiti? I said, I want to see if the United States going to help Haiti. I want to see if they're going to send funding over to Haiti like they did to the Ukraine. I'm for righteousness. I don't care who it is. I said peace to them people in Gaza and peace to the people in Israel. I'm not on no side. I'm on God's side. I don't know what nations is oppression, what nations. Because as far as I'm concerned, all nations is connected together. They all owned by the financial bankers, the international bankers. It's no such thing as having separate nations and everybody use the currency of the uh, other nations. They don't got their own currency like that. Well, let me let me say it different. They all no matter what currency they use, it might not be the same dollars as Africa, as United States. They're using the same banking systems. So you talking about nations got people oppressed. I look at things differently. I see the truth in everything. The same nation that you would think is oppression, the Israelites, they are either working for the international bankers or enslaved to them. I don't care if it's the Rothschilds. I don't care the 13th. I don't care who it is. So what you trying to say? I'm against all wickedness. I speak out against it. I, sh I, re I rebuke it. I shun it. I call it out. I expose it. Reprove it. So I don't know what that comment posted me, a bar, but. And you ain't no Israelite. Let's get into it. Let's talk about the real truth. You ain't no Israelite. You was born in America, not in Jerusalem. You read the Bible and said, I want to keep the customs and laws of the Hebrew Israelites. The same thing I was doing when I thought I was a Canaanite following a false prophet named Noble Jew Ali. Running around talking about I'm a Moor and I'm indigenous to America, claiming my nationality, handing all these paperwork out to all these people in the government, changing my name, going to the highest people in the government, doing all this stuff. Man, you don't know how it feel and what I went through. You going to talk all crazy? People already know me. The FBI already know me when I held up the Moorish flag, putting on the feds and all that stuff. What are you talking about? I was involved with the same way how you think. I almost died thinking like that. The way you think is a, I ain't gonna call it racist cause that ain't biblical. It's an unclean spirit. That's the devil you possessed. If I wanted to say I was Chinese, can I say I was um, from the first tribe of China too? Y'all just want to say Israelites because Jerusalem got the glory in the Bible because God gave them the law. 
Y'all want to be attached to royalty, to power. But Jesus Christ said, it's no more of that. Kill that spirit in Jesus' name. That's why he came. Paul said, I was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He counted it all dung. You know what that mean? Just to win Christ. Did Christ preach to the Israelites only or did he, did he preach to the Gentiles? So what other nations are you talking about? They all supposed to be getting the truth of God's word. So what are you talking about? Who's oppressing who? The Bible speaks against men sellers. I said, God, y'all talking, the Hebrew Israelites is the, uh, believe in that stuff. Slavery was in the Old Testament, not in the New Testament. It speaks against it. It say the laws made for men sellers. That's slave masters. I don't get some of y'all. Do I have a white woman at home? I have tried everything, family. And yes, I still need help. That's why I'm on here asking. Well, maybe somebody will help you. You said $9 is all you need, but it just seemed like what will make you come to my chat and you didn't even greet me. I don't even know you. You just came out of nowhere. You seen this chat was live and it got a lot of views and you seen us talking about God. You know, people that talk about God are caring and loving. You know, people give tithes and offerings to church. So you felt like you can come in here and be a wolf in sheep clothing and basically trick the people to giving you something I'm not even asking them for. That's the devil. You can't ask three people at the gas station for three dollars. But you come over to a bunch of strangers you don't even know. You can have a conversation and introduce yourself to them people and show them that you broke down. We don't know if you're telling the truth. We want to see it first. That's like somebody walking up to you in the, in the supermarket saying, hey, you know, my car's broke down outside. Can I get $100 to get home? Man, you trying to buy groceries or something. It ain't like we met at the gas station and and you asking me this question. Man, you online asking people this. We can't see each other. Matter of fact, tell us what highway and your exact location. We'll call the 911 to your location. How about that, y'all? Let's do that. Tell us where you at and we'll call 911. Somebody got AAA? Call 911 to his location. Tell him he's broke down and he need help. Tell us your exact location, brother. You talking about you tried to police and they couldn't help. You a liar. You lying on the cops and all that. Lying up. I hope the cops trace your screen name. Somebody catch you for lying. They going to catch your cash app and hunt you down, brother. You can't do evil if, uh, and get away with it. You're going to be brought to light. It's too much light in here for you to come in here with that much darkness. Trying to trick and finesse and scam people. You don't see me asking for donations. What you doing up ahead? Asking for donations. You lucky I ain't block you, brother. Golden, golden. We're going to get back to these teachings. D. -doc, Judah, Hebrews 1 and 8. But unto the son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A sceptre of righteousness is the sceptre of thy kingdom. John Dalton is scamming on numerous channels today. So that's somebody else that just said it. Don't send him nothing, y'all. He probably a Nigerian or African scammer out there just on multiple accounts, sending people the same message, got it copied and paste. Don't send him nothing. If you sent it, you better cancel it. Matthew 16, verses 13 through 22. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Whom do men say that I, 
the son of man am. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He say unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. You hear that? The son of the living God. And Jesus come and say, when I judge, I am not alone because it's not me that judge, but the father with me. How are y'all not understanding this? Like he told him so many times. I came to do the will of my father. He said, who is my mother's sister? He didn't come and keep all that Israelite. Oh, we got, we all the same tribe. We got the same bloodline. Jesus reproved y'all for trying to make him look like he was a black man right here when he said, who is my mother, my sister, and my brother, but those who do the will of my father. And then he said, who is my mother, sister, or brother? Who's that? Those that hear the word of God and do it. He said it two times. He didn't say, oh, my bloodline is the Hebrew Israelites. He didn't say that. Y'all trying to make Jesus look racist. That's the devil in y'all Hebrew Israelites. The Lord rebuked thee, all y'all. I'm talking to every last camp. I'm proving with the word of God that he was not who y'all making him look like. He did not have that spirit of hate and racism and, and classism and that stuff that y'all trying to practice. You learn that in them sororities that y'all join. And then y'all come out to sororities and become Hebrew Israelites and want to make a camp because you was left your sorority. You want to make a renouncement from the, the Q dogs or the Kappa or whatever y'all in, the divine nine. And y'all want to join something that's more righteous because you knew that you was working against God. And now y'all come with another false doctrine, deceiving more people. Maybe y'all was sent by the devil out of them sorority camps to make the Hebrew Israelites corrupt. Because every Hebrew Israelite don't be like y'all. But it's just a lot of so much corruption nowadays. All of them that say Jesus was black and you know he, we got the blood of Jesus and all that. Man, that's the devil talking to y'all doing that. He didn't say that. He didn't make himself like that. He didn't speak like that. Y'all add that to the word. I could sit up here and beg for money every day and I could say, Jesus knows I'm telling the truth. I really need a big house and a better car and all this stuff. But man that's not right it's not righteous be content with your wages go ask three people for three dollars if why you ain't type your location but you talking about god knows i'm telling the truth type your exact location city state zip code and whatever the name of the gas station you at and somebody gonna call 911 to that gas station see if we had the call in number we'd make you say i uh, all your location and then just call right on the call and I'll just call on the three way if I could do it like that but it's probably don't it's not set up like that it ain't that advanced it's just a call in line but I'm, I, I gotta look into the call in number I already think I put it in my notes D dot talking about read those Jesus will make you look bad bro all right, I'm 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 looking for what you got. Please read my comments above, brother and family. John Dalton, we want you to ask other people because they said you in all these other people chat and asking for money. So we don't believe you. That's why I said email me so you can show me. As soon as you email me, I'm going to ask you for your phone number and I'm going to voice call you. Or I'm going to ask you for your Instagram and then I'm going to tell you to show me. NS says, find a church that goes through Bible chapter by chapter, verse by verse. The church of God. When you read it all about through the New Testament to the Old Testament, they mention the church of God seven to ten times. That's the only name a church is supposed to be. That's Besides like the churches we see written in um, Revelation, the, the seven churches, but when it mentions a church, it say, Jesus said, 
um, the Holy Ghost made you overseers over the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. And then it tells us so many times about the church of God. So y'all can do that study on your own. Just go look through the scriptures. How many times did the church of God mention? Sometimes when you go on King James Bible and you type up that stuff like that, it'll show you how many instances it's mentioned and bring you to the chapter and verse. Jesus ain't never commanded the disciples not to call him Christ. He said, thou art the son. He said, who do, you, who do thou say I am? Thou art the son of the living God. But they will call him the Christ in different scriptures too. But you are right. They do mention Jesus of Nazareth. They do say uh, Jesus. They say Lord and say, they say many different things. They mentioned uh, the prophet. They called him Messiah. Aziza Mujib, you must be a Muslim. Jesus is God because all throughout the New Testament, he explains that he came to do the will of God. He was God in the flesh. So he came to perfectly fulfill all the prophecies from the Old Testament. He was the king of David, the king of Solomon. He was the king of Isaiah. He was the king of the prophet Ezekiel, the warner, the watchman. He was a king of Noah. Y'all didn't know Jesus was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob king, the God of Israel? He, he said, I and my father are one. So everything you say about God, you're saying about Jesus. The power to heal comes through Jesus name, not just God alone. God to do it, but his name is has power in it and God to move things with that name. That's how Jesus is God. Because he's connected to the father. He came to do the will of the Father. He came to show us what God was in the flesh. He died and then rose back from the dead. He raised, he took people that was dead and brought them back to life. Read about Lazarus and stuff like that. He said, Lazarus not dead, but sleeping. It's a, it's a lot of scriptures in there. You got to get and just read into them. There's so many books and lessons that every teaching they explaining that Jesus is God. Every book from Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Revelation, he said, I'm the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega. Do y'all know what Alpha and Omega mean? And then I'm the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. I and my father are one. The King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, there's no other name with more power on earth than him. Y'all talking about keep the commandments of Moses. They said there's no other name given on earth with more power. We don't pray to Moses. We not keeping no um, all them laws. If we wanna let our bears grow, we let them grow. If we wanna eat something like sh shrimp, sh I, I, I like shrimp, fried shrimp or shrimp scampi. If we wanna eat fish, God didn't say we can't do that in the New Testament. If y'all gonna keep all the laws, you are cursed because by the law, we get the knowledge of death and, and no law, no man is justified through the law. Oh, so have, have fun trying to keep that. It sound good trying to teach it, but I go in deeper and show y'all how tithes and offerings was from the Old Testament, but a lot of people keep that. So I don't want to hear Pastor Gino Jennings or any pastor telling us it's a shame if a man have long hair and you keep what you want from the Old Testament. But when we say number six, let the locks of our head grow, y'all going to look at us like we don't know, like, oh, no, we ain't under the law. Well, why are you using it then? You see, 
that's how you got you got to learn if when you know the word of god you could defend yourself against all these um um doctrines that they throw at you cuz it didn't god didn't command us not to have long hair it was men in the old testament with long hair they said samuel hair gave him power and um so it said doesn't nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair it's a shame unto him Pastor Gino Jennings don't want to see me on this. I'm waiting for him. Reach back out. I'm going to try to call him again and see. He coming to New York real soon if, if we can talk and have this discussion on these topics. But I don't know. Let's see. D. Dot is a bot. And very nature. This is about Jesus. Yeah, one cup, two beers. D dot is definitely like some type of person that's just coming in here to well not nah, D dot ain't no bot brother he was posting scriptures and stuff like that but he was just he was he wanted to learn so the only way he can learn is ask questions he didn't want to ask questions humbly he wanted to disagree and he wanted us to prove him wrong so that's why he was bold with his disagreement he wasn't a bot he just wanted to learn, and we taught him a lot. He's still in here, obviously, so. He's saying, just read it, but I don't know what he's saying. Read what? Because Jesus is not a Christian. Okay. <laughs> I like that. So, going to the book of Acts. Going to the book of Acts. It says they was first called Christians in Antioch. Go to the book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 26. And when he had found them, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So it don't say Jesus Christ, but the disciples. So this is where you get people in church call themselves Christians. This is the foundation of the church. The book of Acts is the blueprint of how all the churches supposed to be ran and how they were built. You want to know what the name of church supposed to be? Go into the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 5. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. No, it didn't say the name of it, but it just says of the church unto God. I've read it wrong. I thought it said church of God. But it do say it so many times that you're going to start seeing it more than you thought once you read the word now. Now that I, talk, now that I told you all that, look, look, look out for it. Once you look specifically for it, you're going to find it even better. But definitely mention like seven times. You don't see a church name, the name that the, the church that y'all go to. You don't see a church in the Bible changing a church name and it still ain't biblical. But I, I, I won't go on to all that. I try to save some of that if we have this debate or the di discussion because I don't debate. You got Hebrews 1 and 8. I think, yo, you know what the problem is, brothers and sisters? We might need to pull out the dictionary for D dot because some words, he might need more clarity to see what they mean. This the etymology dictionary. You know he a Hebrew Israelite, so you know we got the etymology and all that in here for him. That's what we might have to do for um, D dash. I'll keep the dictionary right up here for you, brother. Just in case. You let me know any word that you don't understand, and we're gonna go right in the third edition. They got the etymology for the Latin term, what what it mean in Latin. Like when you look up family, it say household servant, it derives from Latin, la familia, and it means household servant, family. Okay. Only for D dot, y'all. Well, let's go into Hebrews one and eight.
but unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A sceptre of righteousness is the sceptre of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, remember Jesus said, I'm the beginning and the ending. I'm the alpha and omega. Now check this out. And thou, Lord, the king of all kings, Lord of all lords. So it's talking about Jesus here. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, haste laid the foundation of the earth. I, the world was created by him, but it didn't know him. Oh, wow. This is this is beautiful, wonderful. I love you all. Thank y'all for these scriptures y'all provided me with. I couldn't do this without y'all and God. All glory be to God because it's his word. We can't take credit for none of this. All glory be to God. It says, where we at? Hebrews 1 and 8. And I, I went to like 9 or 10. Thou hast love righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So we know we got the oil. Okay. It says, And thou, Lord, in the beginning, haste laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. See? And then... So the word was spoken by the Lord and God bear the Lord witness with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts. So these gifts is not just the gifts that they had it's gifts that that was passed on to us gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will, not a gift to say Jesus was black and we we got the blood of Hamashiach and all this stuff y'all talking. It's spiritual. It says there's now for no condemnation to those in Christ who walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. What do y'all when what you think this is if you claim a bloodline? Blood is flesh, right? Jesus said in the spirit there's no condemnation. But if you walk after the flesh, we'll condemn you to the to the to you get back on track i've seen john i've seen john doton on four channels asking for money yeah john doson is a bot john doton is a bot d dot is not a bot he ain't asking for money he's asking real biblical questions but he's being real stiff neck and he has a hardened heart he don't really like he don't he act like he don't want to hear the truth good morning god bless and amen rob blaze boykin god bless may peace be upon you brother i'm not even focused on um that dude no more aziza mujib jesus does things humans do so he isn't god no Jesus showed humans how to do things that he did. Jesus, let's go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 on it. Let's let's break this down. Aziza. Isaiah, Isaiah. Let me just look for the exact page. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. So 
the first time you hear about governments and stuff like that is in the Old Testament, judges and stuff like that. But it's telling you the government is going to be on this, this, the birth of the Prince of Peace. So this is talking about Jesus. He was the prince of all princes. But not just a, a prince or a prophet, the Messiah, a king. He was God. So he was not just a regular human. Or you said Jesus does things humans do. So he isn't God. Tell me one human that can make the ocean stop. Tell me one human that can die and come back to life. Not a spiritual, but die and come back to life. See? Tell me what human can raise up the dead. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government. Now, this is a heavenly government, but you've seen it here on earth, but it starts from heaven. Remember, it says you sit on the throne judging the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel sitting on a throne. And then it talks about in heaven, he sits on his throne. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this it talks about all kingdoms being built in righteousness it says if the kingdom ain't built in righteousness it's Satan's kingdom it tells you that it says Satan is not divided he can't cast out himself and Uh, Daniel or whoever that was Aziza saying Jesus does things humans do he did not do things humans do he was doing miracles signs and wonders he came and baptized people and they was filled with the Holy Ghost how you gonna have a woman come up and have 12 years issue of blood she went to all type of doctors and physicians nobody could help her then she just came up on Jesus and touched the hem of his garment and was made whole. That's not things that humans do. They said at the shadow of Peter passing by, people wanted to pass him and, and touch him and they could be made whole. These people was walking with power. This is why people pray and do all these things because they knew the things that they were doing was miracles, signs and wonders. Really, people really witnessed and seen them things. Many witnesses and testimonies. That's what the whole Bible is about. Different people witnessing and testifying of the miracle signs and wonder that Jesus did in the New Testament. Even some things in the Old Testament tells you things that he would come and do. So they told you if someone healed the sight of the blind, man, this guy, he has to be having a God with them. But they said he did it on a Sabbath day. So he got a devil in him. So he was coming to fulfill all them traditions and customs of men. He said they keep the traditions of the elders. They don't eat unless they wash their hands like all the other Jews. But he said it ain't it ain't no sin to eat with defiled hands or unwashed hands. That is. Yeah, King James is the best version, brother. You got to get the King James version. Uh, when you read the NIV, they add to the word, making stuff, say stuff that it ain't even in the scriptures. God said, don't take an add to the word. 
If I had started with an NIV, I wouldn't be where I'm at today, brother. I'd probably be believing in women preachers and everything. <laughs> on the Women Preacher channel talking about amen. Preach on, preacher. I'd have been over there on Joyce Myers' platform. Amen, brother. Actually, you're not wasting your time. You're on a quest for the truth. Xavier Citizen, always. The word of God is made flesh. One cup, two bears. That's 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 the truth. Daniel Mercedes says, be real. I, yes, read that. Antoine Mack, be real. People nowadays hold people back in the day to current people's standards. Scribes back then took careful note when they took their roles. They can't just erase. They write on scrolls. Their integrity higher. So he said a lot there. People nowadays hold people back in the day to current people's standards. Scribes back then took careful note when they took their roles. They can't just erase what they write on scrolls, I think you want to put. Their integrity is higher. So, the stuff that was written on the laws of Moses was written on scrolls. So, when you come with the laws of Jesus and he says all these things, like, he sp they spoke against circumcision and all that. He said you got to be circumcised in your heart. All this stuff, they were speaking to the Romans. And it's just so deep because when you know that it's, it's like a little bit of the historical context of the scriptures, it widens up your mind to see they was really, really all over the world. Like when we look at the back of this map in the Bible, you see all these places they went. They went into Asia. You wouldn't, nobody wouldn't have think that they'd heard about Jesus Christ in Asia. You just think they always had Buddha and that's it. Hinduism or whatever, right? But Jesus was preached. That's why they put, this is why Muhammad said he was a prophet. Because they, they was all over, brothers and sisters. Asia. You got the Thessalonica. You hear they got a verse called Thessalonians in the um old in in, in, in the New Testament, right? You got First Thessalonians and Second Thessalonians. The Corinthians was a real rich people. The place where they were at geographically, uh, I don't know if it was the soil or the sea or what, but they were rich. Where's Corinthians? Sicily. Some of these places are still here. Italia. It don't say Italy. It say Italia. So you got Rome. Paul spent two years. Paul spends two years preaching the gospel as he awaits his arrival to Nero. They were all the way up in Rome and Italia and stuff. They sent Paul all the way up here, brothers and sisters. Look. It tells you. Sorry. They called it Italia. Now they just changed the name to Italy. But. You got Rome. They got different names of places. But Sicily connected basically to Italy. The Ardiac Sea. The Ardiac Sea. The Ardiac Sea. The Ardiatic Sea. So 
So they were sending Paul certain places. Then Luke joined Paul. And then you got Crete. They was Egypt. They got they got up out of there, right? Surrender. You got all this stuff. Egypt and all this stuff was connected. That's that's how I'm looking at it. The whole world was connected at one time. I don't know if the split happened before these times or after, but certain certain maps will even show you. Like, so these wars that we see in these people fighting today, they fighting over land that was once the same land So when they was in Lyst Lystra, it tells you right here, Paul and Barnabas was mistaken for gods. They said, let's call Paul Saturnalius and let's call Barnabas Juniper. They thought, the, look, that was in Lystra right there. They was mistaken for gods, brothers and sisters. They wanted to worship him. He said, we are just men like y'all. Worship the true and living God. But th that's true what you said in that comment. Their integrity is higher. I guess you mentioned in the Hebrew Israelites because they wrote a lot of stuff on them scrolls, things like that. Man, I got 5% on this phone. We did five hours. If the phone cut off, man, it was good with y'all, but I got to keep cutting my car on and off. I'm running my battery right now. It's not always good. He going to read one version and question another. So confused. I don't get what you're saying. Jesus is God. The angel Gabriel proclaimed him as God when he came to Mary. Yeah, that's why when Jesus was born, they brought gifts to him and worshipped him. Who else do you hear about in the scriptures when they was born? People brought gifts and started worshipping them. This is why I rebuke y'all when y'all worship your own birthday and celebrate because you're not God. You're not supposed to celebrate your birthday. Only celebrate and worship God. Praise and honor is due to his name. You just a servant. We servants. Read the word, my brother. It doesn't come back void. Never. Tony Butler said, brother, if anything in the New Testament doesn't line up with the Old Testament, it's tainted. I know how to line up. Let the, let the bishops be the husband of one wife and... Love your wife like Christ through the church. It don't mention. Now, it might say husbands and wives, but it'll never say. Let the let the bishops be the husband of one wives. You it don't say stuff like that. It's written particularly when it say thou shall not commit adultery. It's simple. You know what adultery means. Do we have to go through the teachings on it? They want to have concubines. Where do we, where, where show me where in the law do it teach a man how to have concubines? And 700 wives. You're reading Solomon. You just learning wisdom. That ain't you. This is crazy, brothers and sisters. When I come with this, it's going to put a lot of people to shame because they can't uh, well, I got to I got to get this teaching out real soon. This teaching on this whole doctrine that they created with I can have as many I can have more than one wife and a lot of Hebrew Israelites really living like that they probably got two wives living together and stuff but when I come out with this teaching it's going to be a lot of hardened hearts they're going to be pricked to their heart because I'm taking every person I'm a look if a man have two wives one beloved and another hated 
and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated. And if the firstborn son be hers, that was hated. And it sh then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath. Hey, Y'all don't know what this mean when it say two wives. Because it always talk about one of the children going to be hated and all that stuff. This is the firstborn's inheritance. And then it talks about, it says, all right, if a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated. Right then and there, that's a sin. How you going to hate your wife? We already know they telling you this is the, the law is a curse. And through the law, all men die, death. But. This ain't a law to have two wives. This is talking about war with rebellious cities, war with outsiders, marriage to female captives. Captives. The New Testament don't teach you to have slaves, brothers and sisters. Marriage to, to look, brothers and sisters, marriage to female captives. Y'all are not slave masters. So y'all enslaving y'all own people? Or are you enslaving Spanish women? You, I got a Spanish wife. And then have another wife. Are y'all saying y'all slave masters? The law is made for slave masters in the New Testament. You cannot honor Christ with your lips, but your heart is far removed from him. I will tear you up with this word. Thank y'all, brothers and sisters. Y'all ain't helped me with this, but I just opened up the word in Deuteronomy. I said, let's give him law. What well, God said, give him law. He's using me to, to, to put y'all to shame. To bring down many high and mighty, all the Muslims too, not just the Hebrew Israelites. If any man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated which is indeed the firstborn but he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hates for he is the beginning of his strength the right of the firstborn is his so now these are laws regarding marriage to female captives So when Solomon had all them wives, y'all see where we going with this brother and sister. When Solomon had all them wives, did he get married to female captives? He was a king. What do kings do? It's king in Israel, his father was a king. Y'all don't got no captives. We not under the law. What are y'all talking about? This is what I'm trying to show y'all. Yo, D dot, you with me on this one, brother? I watch him disagree. Hopefully he don't. Jesus is not the king according to God. See, he's still on that. D dot, Judah, you're so confused, brother. That's what I'm telling him, CK. S6, South 6. Zoo Gang 12, what don't make sense? I just broke everything down. How you gonna hate your own wife? Man, the law is, is you learn so much from the law. I don't wanna throw the wall, I don't wanna throw the law away no more. Let's keep the law, cause I wanna keep learning. Put y'all to shame. <laughs> In Jesus' name, I'm gonna put y'all to shame. <laughs> we discuss the word every day. Please subscribe. Amen. We're going to try to do these 7 o'clock streams every day because I'm seeing this is clicking the people that's in Jerusalem and people that's in Bangladesh and stuff like that. I got a Muslim dude that helped me out. He helped me with promotion and marketing my channel. He's out in Bangladesh, so he might see the videos and share it to his friends. And then every little point counts. Every little person that watches and comments and questions, every little thing counts. So more people see, more people get edified, more people get familiar with God's word and God get all the glory. 
one cup, two beers. Jesus is a man approved of God. Janice Clark says, stop being rude. How am I being rude? I'm being truthful. Do I, I'd rather please, if look, what they say in the scriptures, we rather please men than God, God forbid. It said, I'd rather please God than men. Let, let God be true and every man a liar. It say all that. What you mean stop being rude though? I ain't being rude. I'm being hospitable. Apt to teach. Having a good report with all. So even my enemies will be pleased with what, of what I'm saying. That's what I'm doing. Bro. Yes, read that. Con Y does stuff, says I'm, they got a lot of people in here that's not posting biblical context, so I'm going to try to skim through. I'll, I'll read y'all comment. Y'all want to be acknowledged, but I'm going to respond to everything. Things that's biblical, I'm going to go right in. Acts chapter 2, verse 21 to 22. And it shall come to pass. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Thank you, brothers and sisters. You just, it shows that God raised Jesus up. He was approved of God. By miracles, wonders, and signs. But listen, did Jesus do this on his own? No, God did it by him in the midst of you. Thank you, my brother. You giving me so much wisdom, D. You trying to prove me wrong or something. But you showing that Jesus didn't, God did all this stuff. Jesus ain't do it. He did the will of God. How can a man come and not commit no sins? Everybody in the Old Testament had sins. Even priests had to give sin offerings for themselves and for the people. But Jesus come, man with no sin, running in the temple, flipping over the tables and stuff like that. Telling them, y'all made my father's house a, 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 a den full of thieves up in there selling turtle doves and all this stuff. It should be called a house full of prayer. They were sinning up in the temple, brother and sisters. You telling us to keep the law, the same law of them people that was teachers of the law and they were sinning in the temple. The priests had to give sacrifice for themselves. David going up in the temple, profaning the temple on the Sabbath. But you telling me to keep the Sabbath. The priests blasphemous the temple and are profane on the Sabbath day, right? Come on, brother and sisters. And Jesus said, the, the Sabbath was made for man and not the man for Sabbath. Therefore, the son of man is Lord of the Sabbath. Y'all don't get what these teachings mean, but I'm trying to give you wisdom because I'm breaking it down. Easy and simple. Giving you sound doctrine. Him, but y'all are babes, some of y'all. So y'all not ready for this strong meat. Y'all still got to, some of y'all should be teachers, but y'all still got a need for somebody to teach y'all. That's the word. You need milk. Some of y'all should be teachers, but you still got the desire to have milk. Him only, not Jesus, you say. Gabriel proclaimed Jesus was God before he was even born. Give me chapter and verse for that, CK. I'd believe it. Because Muhammad, look, that's why Muhammad tried to use that and say, Gabriel, the archangel, came and talked to him in the cave. Because he knew that. Muhammad had... A lot of wisdom about the word of God. That's why he called himself a prophet. That's why he probably put the word apostle in the Quran. He tried to say Mary was the queen of heaven, but he added a lot to show, to show y'all he wanted to be different and be exalting himself. Muhammad had a lot of pride. But he showed the Muslims to look to look look into Jesus because Jesus is a prophet. And he didn't mention nobody else but Jesus in the Quran to look look up to, right? So that's important. That's what all Muslims should look at. 
and then get into Jesus' teachings and see what, what he means and what he taught. Don't pick and choose, D-Dot. You got to take everything. That's why you pick, every time you try to pick and choose one little scripture, I'm going to read what it say after that, and I'm going to teach you even more. And that's what we've been doing the whole time. If y'all can't catch on, or if y'all don't, if y'all didn't really see that or know that what we've been doing, every time D Dot quote a scripture, he probably quoted ten or twenty scriptures by now. Every time he quote a scripture, he tries to prove me wrong that Jesus is not God. And I read like two lines, two verses after what he quote, and I always prove Jesus is God. So it's beautiful. All glory be to God. He got a Bible, so it should make sense. Yeah, that's true, Janice Clark. Amen. He was giving testament to the Trinity. Not me. God is in us, Zoo Gang 12. Every day, all day. These must be the Catholics in here. You got one cup, two bears saying God had his three and one. What chapter and verse is that in? Jesus said, I and my father are one. Is that what you in agreement with? One cup, two bears? It just might be the wording. I don't think it's three different gods in one, but I think Jesus said, I and my father are one. Father, son, Holy Ghost, these three are one. Father, son, and Holy Ghost, these three are one. So the father and the son are one. Jesus said, I and my father are one. They tell you so many different times in different scriptures and y'all still not getting it. Some of y'all got the need for somebody to teach y'all and y'all should be teachers by now. The same Bible that I got, y'all got. But God ain't revealing these things to you like how he revealing it to me. But don't worry. Because we got the spirit of truth and it'll never leave us. And Jesus told us. And I got to drive a little bit. What did Jesus say, D. Dot? First Corinthians chapter three, verse. 17 King James Version If any man defy the temple of God Him God shall destroy For the temple of God is holy Which temple are you are? So when, when them dudes Was it Joseph's Was it Joseph's daughter Or was it Joseph's Well it was Joseph's sons And his daughter They defiled her temple How did they defile her temple they went and did stuff with her intimately that she didn't approve of. And they said they defiled her temple. So the brothers took the knife, they took swords and knives and went out and they slew all the people that went up in her sister and defiled her temple. Defiling your temple can mean many different things. They say defile themselves with mankind. Is that going at the strange flesh? You could defy your temple many ways. You could defy your temple by believing in false gods. Believing Pharaoh is God. And you should follow after the ways of the Egyptians or the Nicolaitans, which he said, I do hate. You want to follow the ways after the Nicolaitans. That could be defiling your temple. But I get what you're saying, but it's many different ways. They speak about defiling your temple too. Them, when them brothers, they 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 went up and defiled their sister. She didn't want to have, she didn't want no relations with that man and he defiled. I don't know if he was a king or who he was, but he was well respected. And they all went and took swords, all the brothers, and went and, and sliced them all up and, and sliced their heads up and killed them. And they said that God, well, they had to 
they defiled their sister and they said that they had to leave. Joseph said, why would y'all do this? Y'all know they got more people in us in this city. So they had to basically leave up out of there, or, but it was God that was on their side. So he didn't make their enemies come from for them. You can read, that's a whole nother lesson that y'all should be inspired to read. Yeah, that's powerful. Hopefully it won't heat back up so quick, man. I'm gonna try to leave this heat off or something. So, Cause the phone ain't charging at all. I'm still on 6%. So you saying going to Corinthians. Let me turn this around for a minute, y'all. Turn this around for a minute. Jesus Christ created them, them trees right there. He said, I and my father are one. The world was created by him, but the world didn't know him. Jesus Christ created them trees right there, brothers and sisters. You looking at God's creation. God's beautiful creation. We're going to read 1 Corinthians 3 and 1 right now. I'm going there. And I, brethren, <coughs> sorry. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions. You see, that's what I'm telling the Hebrew Israelites. Y'all are carnal. You you trying to tell us it's about bloodline and race still? When Jesus said, my mother and father are who are those that hear the word of God and do it? So, for ye are carnal, for as there's among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos. Are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord give to every man. I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. And ye, look, ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Listen, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. A reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him 
shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Cat Williams, you are Anunnaki, right? You said this chain that I got on is what the Anunnaki's wear. That's worldly. We don't read about no Anunnaki's in the word of God. They are the fallen angels. You trying to say you a giant? Hold on. But this is what brother was getting at. If any man defy the temple of God. Now go where it say. This not what goes into the man mouth that defile a man. But what comes out of the mouth that defile a man. Don't let nobody judge you in meat or in drink or in observation of a holy day. It says it's not what goes into a mouth that defile a man. But what comes out of the mouth. And it says what comes out of the mouth. Adultery, lies, fornication, all that stuff. The pride of life. If they are the same entity instead of three separate entities, please, Romans 8.34, help me understand. All right, Romans 8.34. It's starting to overheat already, y'all. This is crazy. Romans 8 and 34 says, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yeah, rather that is risen. Who is even at the right hand of God. Who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. So, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yeah, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. So, Christ is at the right hand of God and maketh intercession for us. How can somebody be sitting at the right hand of God making intercession for us? A regular human? God said he's the God of the living, not the God of the dead. I guarantee you, you pray to one of your dead grandfathers or grandparents, you're going to be called a necromancer. God will curse you. God don't like that. That's abomination. You ain't supposed to have no relationship praying to the dead. If we come at a dead body, we got to cut off our dreads as the vow we took of a Nazarite. We can't even go to funerals, brothers. We can't come at no dead body. Y'all don't know what these scriptures mean. Ain't no church. Let me calm down. I ain't going to say that because I, I, I'm going to stick the topic. I won't get into all that. They are one. I and the Father are one, Jesus said. That's what I'm telling you. And he sit at the right hand of God and power is given to him. It didn't say power was given to none of them prophets in the Old Testament. Moses, none of them. Said he was counted worthy of more glory than, than, than Moses. Jesus and God are the same. Because this is the word of God. The Old Testament talks about the prophets of God, the laws of God. The New Testament talks about the spirit of God, which is the law of Christ. Jesus also have said, if you have seen me, you have seen the father. There go again. Steps are ordered. I mean. At Marin Rainforest Jungle, I probably didn't see a first comment. Let me stroll up a little. That's a long time ago, brother, because I, I, I don't remember.
Xavier Citizen. I agree with you, brother. Yes, by God's word, not Jesus' words. I've been in here five hours and 50 minutes, bro. You, when, I agree with you, but I also agree that God, God said, don't judge according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. You can't judge righteous judgment because I'm not doing anything that's not of God. Everything I'm doing is doing the will of God, speaking his word, teaching his word, exhorting, edifying. So don't judge. I can't let you judge me on meat or drink or observation of a holy day. And it's not what goes into a man's mouth that defile a man. But I confess and repent. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's a bad habit. And I got to work on it. I've been working on it. This is helping me get through it. But this phone being uncharged. It don't even matter. It ain't no it ain't no big deal. We just gonna keep going, man. I'm not leaning on my own understanding. It says every tongue that rise up against you in condemnation. I mean, every every tongue that rise up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the work of the Lord. This is the, this is the Work of the servants of Christ and it's marvelous. Give me that scripture, brothers and sisters. Every tongue that rise up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. I'm doing everything decently and orderly. I'm not being pride or boastful or nothing. I made a mistake. You just heard me sound like I was about to lose my lung. I had to just you calm it down. Slow it down. Let's make the, Jesus the topic, not me, because let's judge righteous judgment. I'm not in a church. They teach you all that type of stuff in a church. You got to dress a certain way. If you got tattoos on your face, you can't come be a preacher up in a church. That's what they be teaching some of them people. They got the traditions of men and the elders. Lest they eat, they, they, lest they wash their hands, they don't eat. They washed the outside of the pots and pans. Jesus told them. Watch this, John 14, 28. Hold on, let me just go check what where's John at? Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. So he's letting you know all power was given from him, was given unto him from the Father. And I and my Father are one. Watch this. He says, and now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might believe hereafter I walk. I will not talk much with you for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me, but that the world may know I love the father. And as the father gave me commandment, even so I do arise. Let us go hence. I am the true vine. And my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So, 
you want me to break this down, right? It's saying. He's letting you know the father is the law. Is God bringing us everything that he brought from Genesis? But then he goes back in Revelations. These are Jesus' words right here. It's written in red, brothers and sisters. And then right up, he says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. If a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings and the word which he hears not mine, but the father's which sent me. See that the word that you hear is not mine, but the father that sent me. Listen, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Now we at 14, John 14 and 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard now I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye will rejoice because I said, I go unto the father for my father is greater than I. Now he's letting you know he is the father. If he didn't come fulfill the laws in the New Testament, Nobody would know God. All them people in the Old Testament, none of them was keeping them laws. We found out how to be perfect, how to give, how to how to give our cast our worries and our cares upon Jesus. We found out so much through the New Testament that they didn't have in the old, because they were still trying to find a way. How about this? When you want to try to throw me John 14 and um 28, you go to John. How about you do this? Go to John 12 and let's start at 44. Jesus cried and said, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. What is that saying? He doing the will of God. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. So he's letting you know right here. He didn't speak nothing of himself. He spoke the word of God. He spoke God's word, all God's commandments. And he said, that his and I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. But he said, he that re rejecteth me and receiveth not my words, hate one that judgeth him. And so look, he said, if you don't, if you don't receive him and you don't accept his words, there's one that's going to judge you. And the, what's going to judge you is the word that he's spoken. It's going to judge you in the last day. 
if you reject him and receive not his words. So that means let the husband, let the let the deacons, let the bishops be the husband of one wife. You are y'all don't we all don't want to receive that. Y'all want to reject it. Y'all want to be Hebrew Israelites. All right, you gonna get judged in the last day. Matter of fact, you already getting judged because you're walking in the flesh. Y'all still talking about bloodlines. This word is judging y'all. That's why y'all trying to put in all these scriptures. Y'all, a lot of y'all probably Hebrews on the low. Coming out them camps. Trying to tempt me to death. Trying to tempt me. 689, they trying to tempt me like they did Jesus, y'all. Talking about Jesus wasn't a Christian. Jesus ain't teach to have more than one wife either. Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Oh, we just read that. So we ain't got to go all in there, man. You keep talking about that, brother. I told you judge righteous judgment. You can't judge righteous judgment because you judge according to appearance. And there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And my and look. Is it a sin in the laws of Moses? Is it in the two great commandments? All right, then, brother, you got your answer. Show me where it says it's a sin in the laws of Moses. It said, told them to drink a little wine from time to time for their infirmities in the New Testament. But then it said, don't let no one judge you in meat or in drink or observation of a holy day. But I'm telling you, it's a bad habit for me. But I'm not letting you condemn me. So that scripture don't mean what you think it means. It's not for just that one occasion. You're using it like it's for that, but you're judging according to appearance. So you don't even know what that means. If it say judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment, and you saying, God, uh, what you say? First Corinthians 3, 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy a man that go up in a woman without her permission is defiling the temple of God. We won't get all in that go get all into that though. One is of the same accord. LOL, Jesus claimed who he claimed. Uh, we are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy, because you're a mere man claimed to be God. John chapter 10, verse 33. He read the NIV Bible. I'm going to read the KJV for y'all. John chapter 10, verse 33. The Jews answered him, saying, For good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, he put lowercase g's, lowercase g's, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him. Whom the Father hates, sanctified and sent into the world. Thou blasphemous, because I said I am the Son of God. See, he always say the true and living God, too. He says, I and my Father are one. Go into John chapter 10, verse 30. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. He said, my sheep know my voice. He said, I told you. Go to um, John chapter 10, verse 25. Jesus answered them. Because they said, if thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them. I told you 
and ye believe not. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me, but ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father, which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works have I shewed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him saying, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou being a man, makest thyself God. So they telling him he make himself God. He said, I and my father are one. I'm telling y'all the same thing. Y'all getting mad at me like the Jews was getting mad at Jesus. Y'all stoning me in the comment section. Read it, brothers and sisters. He say, I and my father are one. Look, they got mad. Wanted to stone him. You making yourself equal with God. See? Same thing I'm saying. Jesus is God. He the one that made the waves stay still on the ocean. Y'all don't know that. God, ain't no human man. Ain't no apostles couldn't even do that. Come on. We are not stoned. You like y'all? Yeah, First Corinthians. Oh, we read that. We went back up. He died and said, "I will come back." No else has said that. Yeah, he prophesied his death and said, "I'm gonna come back." On the third day and rise. Some of y'all believe y'all going to die and come back as ants and caterpillars and stuff like that. Y'all believe in all them Hindu doctrines and them false gods. So when Jesus died and came back to life, y'all like, wow, this man is powerful. Like they seen the power of God. It was it was real. Y'all can't say you don't believe Jesus died and came back. Because half of y'all believe you're going to die and come back as a bird or something like that. You get what I'm saying? Y'all believe in that stuff. A lot of y'all. But that's a false doctrine. Somebody messages hell for review, but it ain't let me view it. It's keep giving me the same comments. Here we go. Real Donald Trump. Hello, everybody. May peace be upon you, Donald Trump. The real, I mean, real Donald Trump. Eric Razad, may peace be upon you. Hi, God, our Savior. Yeah, Jesus Christ is our savior. All the Godhead was fulfilled in Jesus. I heard a video, a Christian artist got a rap song and Donald Trump come on there and he say, um, sin is, he says, talking about sin. He said, it's a beautiful, he's no, he said, it's a wicked, horrible thing. He said, it brings stress and all this stuff. He said, but it's a cure for sin. And his name is Jesus Christ. The son of God. Hi, God, our Savior. And that song is called Exodus. The brother rapping about Isha Exodus. It might be that brother uh, Lacey, I think his name is. He make a lot of remixes. Hi, God. Um, he said... Ken Ward. King David was called Lord. Jesus was King David, Lord. Jesus was the king of every king in the Old Testament. I kind of always wanted to say that, but today we just proved it. So now it don't just feel like I'm just saying it to say it. Now I actually confirmed it, proved it, and now I know it.
Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. And he was the only one that did that. And that's why I said, did he get all them wives under the laws of um, servants? Because they got laws in, in Deuteronomy dealing with servant, women servants, female captives. Look, marriage to females captives. That's in the Old Testament. Can you shout me out? Hello, me. Shouted you out. Hello, me. May peace be upon you in Jesus' name. Have to be born again, not in the womb, Jewel. Yup. They didn't know what Jesus mean when he said that. They said, how can a man be born again? Can he enter into his mother's womb a second time? They said, he said, no, you got to be born of the spirit. And baptize in water. Lee Rose, Fanny OK. You got people in here that got Muslim or Arabic writing, but it looked like they got the picture of a graven image. Jesus, I don't know what that is. I don't know if y'all see the replace comments when I pin them. I know it'll pop up on some of y'all screen. That looks like a graven image, but he got like Chinese Arabic writing. I don't know if y'all could decode that and read that and translate it. But I think he wrote two times. Women at the well. God wants a people that worship in spirit and in truth. Somebody say, keep reading. D I read. Praise Christ Jesus, my brother. How you doing? Love you. Can't do nothing about it. Amen. Peace. Beyond to you, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts chapter 2, verse Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So Peter told them to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift. It's a gift from God. In Jesus Christ's name. One cup, two bills, said D dot. Your God is your flesh, carnal mindset, Jesus kingdom mindset at hand. You can choose that if you want to. That's okay. There we go. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproofs. For correction and for, oh, let me get that back. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, 
that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. See? All scripture given by the inspiration of God. So when they say Jesus says I am the Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end the first and the last So that confirms everything that I need to know. About what is the whole Old Testament leading us to? To the New Testament. That's why they always say the Lord of hosts. They talking about prophesying when Jesus will come, what he would do. Or the, the same spirit that's, that God gave Jesus, that was it was working in the Old Testament. Well, it, it mentions it multiple times. You got to look at the context when it mentioned Lord of hosts and you'll know. Yeah, we know that the Bible was written for certain parts of people at certain times, but it's a book of prophecy. So it is for us. It is for us. When it talks about the word of God will have two in one household divided, the step parents against the stepchildren. That's not just written for that time, brother. All that stuff ain't none of it really just some stuff was written for that time. Don't get me wrong, but it's prophecy. So this is where we pull out the dictionary. See if we could get the. The original origin of what prophecy mean and everything. Let me see. All right, so it got prophet and it got prophetic. I read, no, it got prophecy. So look, I'm going to put it up there first. You see it? I'm going to read it. Prophecy is a noun. It's the first definition is a prediction about what will happen. So it was what will happen at that time. And these prophecies wasn't just for that time. They still happening now or some stuff was written for the future. So that's how to buy it. Scripture where the God was written. So it says prophecy, a prediction about what will happen or to the power of prophesying origin, Greek prophet. Tia. And then it says prophet one. A person sent by God to teach people about his intentions. Two, a person who predicts the future. Now, I don't know if the Bible dictionary got the word prophet in there. Yes, it do. Prophet. 
one who receives and declares a word from the Lord. This is a biblical definition. Here we go. Prophet. Y'all want to screenshot it? Take it. So it says, one who receives and declares a word from the Lord through a direct prompting of the Holy Spirit. They predicted the future, called Israel to honor God, anointed and advised kings, pronounced judgment, asked God to intervene and lead troops. Their words provided a moral challenge. Jesus' miracles and discernment were prophetic. Other New Testament prophecy was limited to be evaluated by the congregation. Genuine prophecy is loyal to Christ. And it gives you chapters and verses. So, prophecy. Say hallelujah. Donovan Store, hallelujah. All glory be to God. God is the Father, not a Son. Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. The only begotten Son of God. This is why he was able to speak how he was able to speak and do the things he was able to do. But they didn't understand him. He said, I'm from heaven. You from earth. He say, the things I tell you are, are, are if I tell you earthly things and you don't believe me, how would you believe if I tell you heavenly things? He said, I'm from above. Ye are from beneath. He was hitting them hard. Romans 8 and 34 said, Hold up. I think Romans start at. Hold up. Let me just find it. Six eighty. That's what I was thinking in my head. Romans 8 and 34 says that who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. I think I might be reading the same comments, something like that. Angela Mays says the Holy Trinity is one. The Holy Trinity is not one, Angela Mays. Matter of fact, the Holy Trinity is one, Anna, Angela Mays. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. These three agree in one. A lot of people run around saying there's three different persons in the Godhead. My phone got 1%, brothers and sisters. It's acting real crazy on me right now. I love you all. This was the beautiful stream. This was even better than the other one with the 17,000. I don't know if I should keep it going and let it cut off on its own or just try to end it so i can keep it and make sure it's, it'll stay up i don't if i if i just what it happened is if i keep going it'll stay up in the cloud and when i try to come back live again i'll be able to resume but if i end it now it'll it'll start processing and it'll come up in a few hours so joe mama i can't join you i don't know how to do that and this is like we got all these scriptures we writing and reading it says Esau is red, not white. And the Bible does speak about race. It's all about race. A bar. That was the Old Testament. When you say Esau was red, not white. The Bible don't speak about black or white as a race. You never heard the people say this race or that race. They talked about different nations and different lands. But Jesus came and destroyed all that. He came and destroyed all that. He said, who is my father, my sister, and my brother, but those who hear the word of God and do it. He didn't say my sister and my brother are the ones who got the same bloodline as me. He killed all of that.
Judas was an Israelite and betrayed him, right? Xavier Citizen said, I'm in Manhattan, New York City. Let's read in person. Everyone was so calling black until Genesis 25, 1934. What you mean everyone was call so so calling black until Genesis 26? We're gonna have to uh, uh finish this 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 stream at another time, brothers and sisters. I don't want to lose this and have this just sitting in the cloud and then I try I gotta come back and come resume it and let my phone charge. That's a lot. I'ma just end it now while I got a chance, while this one percent is here. And we're gonna come back and finish this. If I try to come back later and y'all not in here, I'll come back tomorrow at the same time. I'm gonna try to make my schedule where I go live at 7 a.m. every day, 7 a.m. And I'm gonna do this full time every day. So I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I'm going to take this time to get off to let all of the Pharisees get their videos off and stuff like that. But I, I will be back. Let me see. Jeru Bao, Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, Pink Ninja, Explorer, MJ, Explorer, John the Baptist. It's encrypted. You need intuition and discernment to study the Bible. Yeah, it says it's. It's spiritual. You have to be spiritual to discern the things of, of, of the word of God. You can't look into it with a carnally minded. That's why Jesus told him, if, if I tell you earthly things you don't believe, why would, how are you going to believe I tell you heavenly things? Yeah, one God, not three. Explorer, that's correct. One God, not three in the Godhead. But I love y'all all. It was good building with y'all. This was so... The God is like glorified. The angels are rejoicing up in heaven right now. I know a lot of sinners is going to be saved and inspired and encouraged by this video. I felt the presence of the Lord this whole six hour and 27 minutes. I don't think it probably was like five or 10 minutes I was on here and then people started coming in. This whole six hours, I felt the presence of God, even through all of the people that don't believe or don't understand. I still felt like the presence of God. So may peace be upon y'all. Remember to follow what's righteous, follow holy Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He is God. He said, I and my father are one. Go back and study a lot of the things I said. Write down, take notes, leave comments, and I'll be responding. I'll be active, giving y'all feedback. I'll be on this daily. I'm not moving off this computer. I'm going to keep preaching the word, and we're going to keep getting stronger in the Lord. May peace be upon y'all. Jesus name.